Well, welcome to another episode of Aaron and Zach's live show. Aaron's not here right now, so it's actually Zach and Brody's live show today. Welcome to the show, Brody. Hey, thanks for having me, Zach. Yeah, Brody, I call him the technician because I feel, I don't know if I told you this before, Brody, but I feel like you have the, the most technical rowing skills of anybody I know. Wow. That's why I call you that. You 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 were able to do things that I that blow me away, and so I'm super impressed impressed by your, your technical rowing abilities and so we're going to talk about some of those today in the show which i'm excited about and oh look Sweet. aaron showed up <laughs> here we go welcome to the show aaron you're only like what is that two minutes one minute late not bad not bad aaron glad you're here thanks for the, thanks for the late invite zach yeah no problem no i messed with you on purpose yeah uh, make me look like the bad guy i know how that is I'm trying to, <laughs> to brody a little head start here <laughs> all right no, enough of the banter aaron we gotta get this is serious business today uh, All right. Your audio is sounding funny. We didn't get a chance to test it, so you should just make sure your mic's working. <laughs> so uh, we're here. Uh, we do this every week at twelve thirty. We'll talk about the time in a second because we're going to change it next week. And it's a show we just we just talk about rafting stuff we like. We review videos. If you guys have videos you want us to review, send them to us. A few people have today, which is exciting. And this is just a fun thing for us to do. I know it's something that Aaron and I like to do on Fridays. We would normally just chat on the phone on Fridays because that's what we do. And now we're basically chatting on the phone with other friends and reviewing videos. And we try not to be, uh, what's the word? We try not to be like armchair quarterbacks, but it's really hard not to be. That's basically what we are. You know, we weren't there. You know, we do our best to give our input and we try to be like thoughtful about it and not just be like kind of dumb about it. But if we're dumb about it, we apologize. And uh, with that, Aaron. Um, you know, we, we decided to change this, this time of the show to every week. So we normally do it at 1230 on Fridays, but, uh, daylight savings time has kind of thrown us off for a loop here in terms of Hawaii time and Oregon time. So we're going to change this show to be two o'clock on Fridays now, which I know is difficult for those of you in Europe, <laughs> but it allows Aaron to go surfing. So we might as well yeah, nice. do it. Aaron's nice. got to get his morning surfing. He can't do it with daylight savings time. Yeah, it's more about the kid's nap than anything. So, yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. Sure. Um, <laughs> All right. But before we get started, do we have anything to cover from last week or should we just go right into it? I introduced Brody already as, I mean, I think Brody is the most technical rower I know. And you can, you can just go along with that because you should. What does that mean, the most technical rower you know? His, his like ability to use the oars and put them at the right place at the right time and just be very thoughtful about placement and moving the boat is unsurpassed. He just like – when he put oars in his hand, he's able to just like do it really well. And he's able to do it even with insies and outies and spinnies. So he's handicapping himself and still able to do it. <laughs> like, so, Brody, do you prefer insies and outies? I do, yeah. You think they're um, better? I don't think they're better. I just have so many more hours on those than I do um, or rights or pins and clips. So you can say they're better. I mean, you choose to use them. <laughs> I mean, so you think you clearly, if you choose to use those over the others, you think it's a better option, right? Um, yeah, for me. <laughs> you, you can, you can, you can let Zach know. I know Zach's the boss, like, and this puts you, you know, in an awkward position. No, no, no. Brody he this... decides how much you work, and so it's really, oh, but, but, you know, I mean, yeah. <laughs> This is your opportunity here to just let him have it. Be like, Zach, you don't know what you're talking about. The way this relationship works, though, I more I, if I more want Brody to work. Like, I need him more than he needs me. That's a right? good point. Like Brody's, exactly. So Brody's, Brody's a world class yeah, guy, so he he can tell me they're worse, and I can't take him off the schedule because he's you know one of the best guides in the world, right? Why why would I do that? I'll throw the pins and clips on next uh, wind run, and we'll talk about it after oh, that. Tomorrow morning, you're going to do it? Yeah, let's do it. If you do pins and clips, I'll do insies and outies, no or stops, no leashes. Tomorrow will be a good level for it, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Why, um, why do no leashes, Zach, and no stoppers? I mean, why use them? I just see, that seems like, why don't you just go without a life jacket, too? And then, <laughs> and why not? No, no dry suit. Just no dry suit. Just go in your little your little board shorts, just board shorts. That's it tomorrow. Yeah, I mean, well, I he should take. just take the oar completely out of the oar lock. And yeah, just there you go. Don't even use his head. Don't use locks. Uh, going Come on, rapids. Yeah, yeah. Just do it without locks. Just have the oars kind of sit in the water. Balanced. Do yeah, Inzy, balanced. Inzy, Inzy's outies balanced. 
Yeah. Um, yeah, we've been talking about and this a lot. These outies are always balanced, no matter what. Ooh, do we really want to talk about that? No. Though we, at some we, point, we we'll have to get into a little bit because Brody, <laughs> since you, you're the, like the only person we've had on who's really that into inzies and outies, so I would, at some point, are we going to watch them rowing today? Yeah, yeah, but I think you know the thing with Brody is I think that he Courtney says give Brody a raise. We just did. Yeah, um, everybody got a raise, uh, but. <laughs> Uh, but I think the thing too is I think Brody is able to do anything, right? He can, he can't, he's like you were, and he can do anything. He just has the most number of hours with Inzi's outies, right? Like when I run pins and clips, like that's the most number of hours for me. So I'm best at that. When I run Inzi's outies, I can do it. It just isn't fun for me because I'm just not used to all the stuff where Brody's just used to it. That's just how he rose. And so yeah. it's easy for him. Okay. I have more hours on Inzi's and outies. Okay. And pins and clips, but I'll so still, I'll, I'll use. Well, I mean, depends on the river for me. I think that's it. But on the wind, I'd rather use pins and clips. You have more hours running hard whitewater and pins and clips than you do in these Audi. So when you run high water, high water you're going to run pins and clips. Yeah, I have more hours running in these Audis too. Not in these Audis. I'm more running spinnies. Do you consider the middle fork hard whitewater? At high water and super low water. That surprises me. You have more hours on NZ's outsies, Aaron. Well, Grand Canyon, Grand, Grand Canyon she uh, trips out up fast. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Aaron, do you run NZ's outies the Grand Canyon? Oh yeah, 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 totally. Not just spinnies. You go full NZ Audi. Oh, I swear. To you. Oh, oh. Yeah, you you have hours spinnies, not NZ's outies. Well, no, actually. Actually, I do run an NZ Audi go. I mean, there's two types. They have the type with like they've got like they've got like a like kind of a fiberglass stopper that's that's blast on with a little plastic sheath below it, like a fiberglass sheath below it. But that sheath is only like that long, and so it doesn't work very well for NZ Audi. So I usually use I start using the compositors because they've got a lot of rope wrap on them, so I can run an NZ Audi. Yeah, and I don't rest on the. And I don't rest most of the time on the on the on the bumper, so I usually run them in Audi. Not not like Brody style where I have it way up, but I usually have it off. Yeah. Well, I have where you have to have balance, right? Like you're not. Well, I just like being able to adjust too, like to adjust mm -hmm. my because the 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 ripper's so strong and my boat's so big. A lot of times, you know, you you'll get thrown out of your seat if you don't have the leverage right. So I can pull it way in. And then and still push and get push and just like stick it in there and hold it, and I'll and I'll move forward depending on what the you know this funky water at the bottom of rapids. Yeah. So I like being able to change my mechanical advantage with the NZ Audi system. So yeah, Zach, I do a lot of NZ Audi, and then change where you're pushing from too, just to change it. Or you, I stand up and row a lot, so I don't want them in the same spot. If I stand up and row, I'm definitely NZ Audi when I'm standing up there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I didn't know NZ's out as it was even a thing people did till like a year ago. And I saw people doing it. I'm like, that's ridiculous. Why would you do that? And they explained it to me and I'm trying to do it, but I struggle. It's hard. It's not fun for me. Like I'll, I can yeah. physically get the boat down, but I'm, it's hard. <clears throat> um, so I think it's, it's just time. What you've done a lot of and what you're experienced with, you kind of tend to gravitate with your honor because <laughs> we, it creates these, these debates. But, I mean, I mean, I'd love to move on to some video, but before we do that, Brody, last question for you on it is like, is there are there times where like man, bro, I really wish I hadn't had Inzies and Audis for that. That I hadn't had them. Yeah, had where them. you were like, where you're rowing and you're like, oh man, this is gosh, I wish I had pins and clips right here. Or do you do you find those spots where you're like you're recognizing, wow, the Inzies and Audis are not my best option right now? Um, I think like if I were going down to do something like Cherry Creek, I would probably use pins and clips. Um, but for the most part, it's always in these Audis. There's people down there who run in these Audis. I'm sure you used to just, not just we, it, they run spinning, well, wait, voyages, guys, you, voyages guys used to run in these Audis like down there. Hmm. How do you yeah. stay in the boat? Like when the oar comes out, you just swim. I don't know. I never Horse did. It. I just know. I just know that some of them <laughs> oh. used to. Do it. Oh, there you go. You got to be in shape, Zach. You got to be an athlete. You you never you never see. That's the thing about Brody's. He never gets in that spot where he has to. He's so good. Right, he never gets his boat on, on an angle like he'd really fall out. He just styles mm. it. That's why he's a technician. Are you doing this on purpose, making us each big to make us uncomfortable, Zach? Yeah. All right. So you're not that big. You just are big on our screen. Like people are watching on YouTube on their phone, so they're not seeing you very big. 
So uh, well, let's get into some video. We could talk. I mean, geez, I feel like I've spent three hours of my life this week talking about the same topic. Um, this is Brody and I had a, our, we talked about this every day almost. Pretty much. It's pretty fun though, I have to admit. But uh, yeah. anyway, so I want to, uh, Peter Gonzalves, hopefully I pronounced that right, Gonzalves sent us this video. Peter watches us quite a bit. And he is sharing with us a bad run he had a while ago at Troublemaker Rapid on the South Fork of the American. And so I think we'll watch this too. He explains it. It's pretty cool. Thanks, for Peter, for putting this together. This is really cool. And I think we'll watch it once through. I think I have it working so everybody can hear the audio that, of Peter describing it. And then, we'll, and then we'll maybe kind of break some things down afterwards. So I'm going to try to play it here. Oh, the audio is not working, though. Not working. Oh, I did a bunch of work to make it work. That's too bad. I was really excited about the audio. Well, Peter, I apologize for not making the audio work. I thought I, I bought equipment to make it work, uh, but we can talk about it anyway. And so, and I and I know what Peter's saying here. It's like he's showing some photos. This is of him running his family down Troublemaker Rapid on the South Fork, and he's rowing obviously. And you know, he's pointing out right now when he's talking, uh, you know, things he knows that we're going to point out, like his his strap that goes around the outside that his kids are holding onto is maybe dangerous, and he's aware of that. But he feels like. It's a way for his kids to hold on and stay in the boat. And I think he even mentions that his oars, he sees that his oars are maybe short. And uh, couple, and I think those are the big things he mentions at first. But these are some I mean, shots of him. And I think the other thing, the other key thing, Zach, is that he talked about how this was before he started watching our show. And he was like, I would do things differently now. That was the other thing he said. So, um, here, Zach, let me, let's see if, if I play it, if it'll... And we'll be here for an hour, technically. I don't want to do technical support for an hour while people watch. Let's just do it, and we'll do it next week if we can. Because honestly, like, it's not as easy as you think. Okay. It's, okay. it's way more complicated than you think. I'm you playing it right now. So yeah, actually, it's not playing. Okay. All right. Um, sounds good. Let's keep going then. So, so this is – he says this yeah, his, is his, right where he, he – Yeah, this is where he says he kind of realized something is wrong uh, right here. Maybe it's right, this one. But this hole in Troublemaker is pretty nasty. Yeah, it looks pretty big. So I this is a good chance to guess what's going to happen here. Are we uh, going to see a flip? And then the big question is, does, does his, uh, we can hear all those mouse buttons you're doing to Aaron, by the way. Okay. If he had pins and clips, he probably would have stayed in the boat, huh? I mean, I didn't want to say it, but, you know, thanks for pointing that out. You're thinking it, yeah. So and then he points out this is the photo that was on the wall at I think of one of the river places for a while. You know, this is not the glamour shot right here for sure. How deep do you think his head is? Yeah, man. Yeah, pretty deep. It's the river's probably pretty deep. And he's pointing out that his, you know, some of his straps, um, or he like hit hit his foot on that that cooler. And Peter, you can add some comments too if you want to here. We uh definitely wish we had the audio. And so his wife and him come out, and he stays in too. And his kids stay in. I'm sorry, his kids stay in. And one of the things he points out, uh, Liz, I'm not sure what year it was taken. Uh, Peter can jump in and, and answer that question. But one point is he definitely was aware that he barely got his head above the water. We talk a lot about PFD flotation, especially Aaron does. And right here, like he barely kept his head above water here. You can, yeah, just getting his lips up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just to get a breath. You know, his head's barely by the water. Now he's underwater. So for a bit, he's underwater here as the rest of this happens. So I, I could, can you stop? This is, I don't know. Are we going to, are we just going to walk through once and go back and break it down? Or are we going to talk Let's about Let's do that. Let's just kind of like okay. walk through it. Really yeah. yeah. I think everybody can kind of take it in and then we can go back and, and talk about some things. So, all 
His kids look good, though. They look happy. Yeah, yeah they're like, sweet. Yeah, this looks great. Another thing he said was that his, you know, they were trying to get a family, like, I think it was a Christmas card, right? <laughs> so they were going to smile going into it. So they're, they were instructed to smile the whole time. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's not good. So for those, of you, for those of you that don't know this rapid, this is Gunsight Rock. And you can go right or left. You don't, you know, you don't want to hit it. But it's rap here, right? I feel like it's oh, yeah. rap here. I think there's the sheriff's boat. They got a great video, great photos of the sheriff's boat wrapped there. <laughs> yeah, this is the thing we talked about last week. We'll come back to the review where and he, the AB holding onto the boat is not awesome. Yeah, P Peter. Peter mentioned that too when he was talking about it. Remember, he talked about how he, he told him to come swim, just hold on to the boat. And now, you know, they get the photos like, well, oh, maybe the way how, how, how dedicated she was to hold it on wouldn't was maybe best. Hmm, that's interesting, Nick. Is it because guides are better? I don't know. Current changing. Uh, so he's still underwater here, right? Oh, yeah, that there is, is right there. I mean, this is again. This really illustrates the importance of volume in a PFD having flotation. And they said this was his first breath after, after he went back down. So I'm going to go back and we'll just kind of go through it and maybe talk about some things um, as we watch it, just point out some things. Anything you guys see here? And, we, and we're not, we don't want to be critical. We just want to like talk about things <laughs> in the context of, of, of Peter's run, which isn't that bad. It's just sort of like things happened. Yeah. I was gonna say I like his rig overall. Just look at the way the boat's rigged. It looks really clean. There's not a lot of stuff hanging off and dangling around. Like I feel like you see certain people, all, you know, like and there's like a lot of extra stuff. And it looks like everything looks clean on it. So his perimeter line is very interesting though, because instead of just going around the whole outside of the boat, it looks yeah. like it comes over the top just behind the uh NRS sign back there. Yeah. And it yeah. does that in the front too, Brody. And yeah. he said that he did that so his kids could, he, he understood it was a little extra entrapment hazard, but he felt like he it was worth it for him for his kids holding on, which, you know, it's a gray area. I don't yeah. you know. I don't know. I was going to say about that, like, you know, he wanted to have the spot in the front for them to hold on. And I've seen on commercial outfitters, they've had, they add two more D rings on the inside and then run a line between those three D rings. So it doesn't come up and over and doesn't create the same entrapment. Oh, that's issue. interesting. They've got the small ones up there so you can hold on inside up front. You can clip stuff to those lines as well. And that's, I feel like that's, that's, that works pretty well from what I've seen. So this is an NRS boat they don't make anymore. Uh, but I could, I, one thing I'm noticing in boats is boats just don't have enough D-rings. All the manufacturers underdo the D-rings. And an example somebody brought to me the other day is if your frame is tied into your raft, where do you put, where do you attach your two point equalizing anchor? Right, it's hard to attach it to D rings when they're all being used for the frame, and so I, I strongly feel like manufacturers should be putting more D rings on the outside of the boat for frames and for anchor points on for wraps, but also interior D rings for things like what you're talking about, Aaron. Yeah, Zach, you're not a paddle rafter, are you? I get that as a paddle rafter, you can <laughs> hit your knuckles on the D rings, but I mean, what would you? What's more important? <laughs> Well, people complain about it a lot. You know, when you run a paddle, people hit their hands on the D-rings a lot. Like we don't because we're experienced and we know how to avoid it. But people snag their hands on them a lot. And having more, I think, creates more of a problem with that. So I think – I think – I mean, that's okay, great. I get it. And I think everyone wants D-rings in different spots. I personally like the minimum and then put the extra D-rings where you want them. Like if you want more, put them on your boat. You know, yeah. Not, not everybody can just order a boat from an NRS and take it down to a repair shop to have them put D-rings on. You know, I no, feel but like it, but it's not right. I feel I, I agree. There should be paddle boats, D-ring setups, and there should be a, a oar raft gearing setup. So if you're going to have an oar raft, here's the more D-rings you need for all the stuff. I yeah. can see. I don't think you really need boat. that many, though. I, you I need a ton. You need twice as many as you need. No, no, no. You're not a gear butter. You're, must, you're not a gear butter, are you? Yes, I am. And I think you're fine. I think you're, you're like. I 100% like, disagree. No way. Zach, I look, look, disagree. look at you. You've got a ton of gear. You like everything. You like you like to bring everything along and have all this stuff. Like I think more D-rings make it messier. And more, more D-rings don't make it messier. What do the D-rings do, Aaron? You might hit your what? knuckles on them when you're paddle boating. 
what if he gets a stern frame? Like, I feel like having more D rings just gives you more options of better places to tie that frame down if you're doing something different. Yeah. I mean, that's a big if, if this, if that. Yeah. So I mean, you can't put D rings. I, I agree with you, Brody. You like, can put D rings everywhere. Why you would can, you can, but if you try to put them everywhere for everyone's setup, it'd be a mess. There'd be D rings all over the boat. Which is like, fine. Everywhere. Sweet. Zach just wants to D ring every inch. Maybe you just have permanent D rings going all around the outside of the boat. Like, hey, I mean, instead of the old I, little no, bumper, I, I take just it. have D rings all the way around. Yeah. I mean, it, you can't do that because it's hard to put a D ring over a seam. But if you could, why not have D rings everywhere? Other than you might hit your knuckles when you're paddling. It also and, makes the raft a lot heavier. You put that many <laughs> D rings on, it'll make the put the raft make the raft a lot heavier. Uh, not a lot heavier. You can double the number of D rings on a raft, and it's like three pounds. Now, I, you're being sarcastic by saying putting one all the way around the boat, but man, it would be nice. Yeah, you're right. I know. Um, it would be nice. To, no, because I think there's just too many. When you have too many options, then it's like overwhelming. Like, where do, which one do I want to use? Versus you just have oh, the minimum. Yeah, I'd much rather that. That's a big problem. Yeah, I'd rather wonder which one do I use versus I don't have enough. Right. Like his rig. You're, you're, let's go back to this. So his rig. You're is trying fine. to be argumentative, Aaron. No, not at all. His rig is great. I think. I think there's enough D rings on boats. Okay, you just said if he had interior D rings. They if could tie a rope on his kids. Yeah, but I don't think that's a – most people don't want that, that little rope up to the front. I'm just saying if you want to have that, that's an option he could do. Would you, rather, not, have, would you rather have him have that little D-ring rope or the thing across the the, the, the neck strainer? I'm actually not boat? really that worried about that. <laughs> I don't think it's really going to cause a problem. I'm, okay. I'm going to say it's not best practices, but I think he's aware of that. Agreed. Agreed. But I will say this. What I would probably do instead – is is i think the bigger problem is like for his wife the way his lines are set for his wife and the way she's sitting she's not secure and i think it's the way she's sitting like i'd have her sitting on the outside too she sat a little farther to the right one hand on the, her right hand on the perimeter line in front of her her left hand on a line that goes over that paco pad and then she'd be way more secure so she'd have her weight on her feet her hands out wide right now her hands are right down by her hips and it's really hard to it's really hard to keep herself stable. If her hands were out wider, she'd have a lot more stability there. So yeah, I think that's so much lower. Yeah, and she'd be lower, lower center of gravity. But it's just yeah. but sitting on the outside too. Yeah, and holding on to that perimeter line and holding on to the uh, to basically the line where her right hand is right now. I would be sitting the outside team have her left hand holding on to that line. So she'd be in having a wider grip, not real and tight, and then she'd be much more stable there. The kids, clearly the kids were fine. They weren't going to fall out because they're down. Yeah. You're down in the well. And that's the other thing. If you're down I mean, in the well. It's Aaron, this is how we run commercial guests in gear boats. You know, we put them on a, on a uh, pocket yeah. pad on a yeah. table and they hold on just fine. On easy rivers. <laughs> okay. So I think, I think my, my, I mean, yeah, yeah, I mean, like, 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 and I'll say the goat boats you have are much bigger than this, much more stable. Yeah. I yeah, say yeah, yeah. Easier. They, they're just not, they're not getting as radical. You know, it's think, like the, yeah. It's really slow. I don't mind where she's sitting. I think she maybe just didn't hold on well. I, I I see what you're saying. She's slightly more stable, probably sitting on the outside too. But it's hard because there's like a there's stuff for her to you know there's the frame she might hit her butt on or there's just there's stuff on the tube. That's it's how hard to sit on I mean. Tube. That's how we run. That's how we have people sit. You know, on when you, on big that's, water rapids. When you say we, you mean you? I don't. Think I mean, like you go down the Grand Canyon <laughs> and you see every every outfitter down there. Most outfitters down there have people sitting like that. On the really? tubes, on the outside tube, one hand on either side. Oh yeah, and then the in the back, same thing. You sit on that outside tube, one hand forward, one hand back, and you're waiting against some bags. Yeah, hmm. I think my um, pretty here's a question for you. My 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 issue with her sitting there is that his oars, if they go forward, are going to hit her in the back. Well, that's and another so I, problem. Yes, I yeah, think that a, yeah. you really can only do this setup if you have a a bay and then the sitting frame. It's hard to do this on a fourteen. You need a longer boat so you can have the the you sit on the cooler or whatever you have where your legs go. You have space and then the thing they sit on. That way, there's no chance she takes an oar to the head or her back or something. Yeah, and that's a good point about the oars. It is nice, and that's another reason sitting farther forward is better. You've got more space between you and the oars. Yeah, like the kids are in a great spot. They're down low yeah. and they're they're secured. Like it's yeah. kind of. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I mean i feel like the kids are the ones that don't fall normally anyways i feel like they're more athletic they're more agile than us adults and they're just yeah. more likely to stay in the raft so yeah. 
Um, so the thing I want to talk about before we go on is, you know, I've been on this obsession with ore length and placement for a while. And I'm going to say that these oars are probably too short and his hands are higher than they need to be to control the boat in the situation really well. You, his hands should be lower, but because they're so short, they have to angle down to the river. Like if he holds them in the right place, his <clears throat> leg will barely touch the water. You're wrong, Aaron. I know. You're, I already know you the look on your face. I'm going to tell you you're wrong. Okay. I, I think in general you have a point, but I think one of the problems here is the way that raft is going over. It's tilted a little to the left, so that right tube is out more. He's got to dig down deeper right now to get water. It's not like he's sitting in flat water. So he's got to adjust yeah, but, a little bit. And I think that's one of the advantages with the Indies and Audis is he can adjust the ore placement a little bit to have the It's not the right ore placement. Right. It's the ore length here. Even with Inzies Audis, you're going to have to do this with them to make them work. Like even here... He's having, you know, he, they're, they're higher than I like to see them. They're about shoulder. They're uh, they're about right, but they seem a little. See, high. they're perfect now. They're, That's they're perfect. Perfect. That's perfect. That looks uh, pretty good right there. But. <laughs> I want them a little bit lower. <laughs> but, I mean, Brody's a technician, so I have to go Brody. You, you like, yeah, Zach, but you're so big and strong, you can have them sit lower. I like to have them in my power zone, right? Basically, okay, where I do push ups. Hey, from. Aaron, you don't have to mock me this whole thing. No, um, you're super <laughs> strong. Okay. You're really strong. Brody, I, I have to make up for Brody, like, with the brown nosing that Brody's doing here today of you. So, um, so, yeah. but so look at, oh, Jesus, Aaron. <laughs> so, C is that, up. like, look at his left arm there. It should never, there shouldn't be, that's pretty high. Right. Well, like, probably caught some current. And that's one of the problems with the, the spinnies is he probably caught current and got yanked up. No, I think, I think it's just high. Anyway, uh, our friend Noel, who, who is an old dear friend of Aaron and I's, um, yeah, I mean, I think we, I think, um, actually, Peter did take some measurements and, and send us. Um, uh, I think he think he said they were a little short. My guess is he put. I'm just guessing here, Peter. You may be correct. I'm guessing these are nine foot oars on a boat that probably needs nine and a half. That's just just my guess. From like, I'm obsessed with this right now. And yeah, I kind of agree with you though, Zach. I think nine and a half is is a really it's, good length for a 14 footer. Yep. Thanks, Nate. Yep. I always use nine and a half. I love I nine mean, and a half. Where we get into trouble with oar length is choosing the length of oar based on the length of the boat. Yeah. It's a function of the width of the oar towers. And so totally. but generally a 14 foot boat has yes. oar tower and generally a 14 foot boat has oar towers set in a way that nine and a halfs work really well. Yeah. That's a generalization. Yeah. Get yeah, nines. So I'm just a little short. I mean, there's just a, you know, nine and a halfs to be even better. Willie bum bum is here to mock me some more. Thank you, Willie, for joining the bro. Yeah, I'm going to say, I'm gonna, hey, yeah, Peter, really. Peter, Peter, I'm going to say I ran, I ran eight, foot 11 inch oars on a 15 foot boat for many years so 15 foot boat though how wide is the frame the That's frame was the frame was like it was kind of a standard frame it wasn't super narrow but uh no so I yeah, mean, no, I I, mean, aaron I, it can be done for sure and he's obviously doing it i don't i'm not going to blame this on his oars being too short i'm just making the point that optimal is just better like it'll be a real real better and you'll be a little lower that this coming up won't happen as much. I, I feel strongly you should never be like this because this is how you throw never, a shoulder. I never. feel like you should try your not to do are that. never above your head. Rarely because they're oh. long enough to where they stay here. When they do this, you're exposing your shoulder to an injury. I think he's up there because he's he's going over. Oh, right here for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so we're at our tower distance was 75 inches. All right, let's put it in the equation. Noel fruit and nicked. Can you just, Hey, Noel, I think there, that would be like math. nine foot, eight inches or something like that. 75 times 1.6 divided by 12. It might be tens. 10.2. What? 9.2. 9. Yeah. 10.2. 10. So 10. No, 10.2. 10. 10.2. 10. 10. So this is what happens though. Like I've, I've done a bunch of these recently where – the, for some reason, the boat is wider than you think it's supposed to be, and the oar locks get splayed out. It makes a pretty big difference on the oars you need. And so he would, I mean, according to what I'm suggesting, I'd run 10s at 75 inches. Yeah, I mean, the other thing, too, is, is you know, he can move his towers in. If they're the adjustable NRS towers, he can bring those towers in a little bit. No, there's some, no. there's sometimes they get splayed out, and sometimes, yeah. like, as I go and look at people's setups, because I see a lot of them now there start to be weird things that happen or they have like the 10 inch NRS towers, which puts them even further out. And so that's why it's good to start with that. Seat height is huge too. Seat height is huge. Um, 
Thank you, Willie. Well, thank you for the compliment, Willie Bum Bum. Appreciate yeah, it. I was thinking I'm moving to 10 foot. Yeah. I, I with this setup, I would. And I have no, I'm not gonna. Oh. That's why I use I don't, I don't, if you're gonna if you're gonna start using a stern mount, you don't want 10 foots on the stern mount. That's a use these nines on the stern mount because the stern mount it'll be the, the you'll it'll be further back and angled in. So these nines are perfect for a stern mount. You were no, no, you were not told that. Well, um, what's interesting is here is I believe Peter is a junior high science teacher. And if you guys didn't know, Zach used to teach high school math. I used to teach high school math. Zach, didn't you also teach some engineering courses as well yeah. at one point? Yeah. So yeah, this is the nerd math show. So just yeah. And we can we can turn anytime this we can drop it in there. So. Hey, Brody can turn this we can turn this into Clone Wars show too. <laughs> oh really? <laughs> By the way, like well, I finished the third episode in season four of Clone Wars last night, and it was <sighs> it was nice. It was nice. Anyway, we won't go, we won't go on that topic yet. Um, so here's so, where I'm gonna I'm gonna make my my claim that this is where pins and clips would help, right? Because you're not, you're that or is gonna sliding that's lock, and and if you have pins and clips, that's how you stay in boats. Oh, if you can uh, hang on. oh come think, on, Aaron, you're gonna just being argumentative. Gonna there's no this. way. I think there's, <clears> it's <throat> good he didn't have pins and clips here. If he had pins and clips no, here, I wrong. bet the boat would have flipped. He would have pulled the whole boat over, swam his kids. Oh, just closed the coffin. Yeah. On everything. What do you? Think Did you wake that? up argumentative, Aaron? Like, I'm, I'm, Aaron, I'm Aaron, on a roll. Aaron, I'm Aaron, just... Aaron, take a deep breath. Just take a deep breath, <laughs> and yeah, drink your water. Hopefully, that's water, and and just rethink your attitude right now. It's an hour early here. I'm I'm okay. way spicier at nine thirty in the morning than at ten right. thirty. If he had pins <laughs> and clips, the boat would not have flipped. You're just being argumentative. No, keep going. Go next photo. All right, hold on. See, if he, 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 yeah. he, 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 he could have kept pulling it over, Zach. He'd be sitting out. with his family on that cooler, ready Look to rock. Look at the angle. No, he's falling out. No. He's like, what happens no. when you throw something? What happens when something goes away? The other no. thing goes the opposite direction. No, this it's, boat isn't. This boat isn't even close to flipping. Yeah, no, he he he'd be just he'd be high. He'd be holding onto the oar, high setting right now. Uh, the point be, he could it could Brody, his well, I don't hear, but we we've been we've been ignoring Brody and just talking yeah, over him. Bro, Brody, bro, what, yeah. Brody disagree. With I him. don't know. These things happen so fast. You think he he'd be on the high side right now? He's not right now. He'd be higher with pins and clips, or he'd he be yarding the boat over. He's not going to yard the, the boat over that right now. I don't know where this yarding the boat over comes from. Like, have you guys ever done that? Held on to a have, Aaron. Have you ever held on to a pin and clip too long and you? Because of that, it went over. That's not a thing. Um, yeah. Yeah, I have. I think I have a photo of it, actually. Yeah, I have a photo of it. All right. Well, you find it and we'll talk. <laughs> but I, I just like I would rather I would rather hold on my oar and stay in the boat than like, oh no, I'm gonna sacrifice myself. You're saying he's sacrificing himself by the for his family by falling out right now. Yes. That's what you're saying. He's not doing yes, that. And it, no. Yes, and his wife, the two of them together sacrificed. If they had, if they had stayed in the boat, they it would not. They'd be just fine. <sighs> okay. If anybody wants to comment, you can disagree. Tell us what you guys think. Because I really want to know if he had pins and clips. If if the audience, because Aaron and I are on diametrical sides here with Brody on Aaron's side, do you think if he had pins and clips that him staying in the boat would have flipped it, or do you think it's good that he fell out? I'm Zach. I'm not saying it. So he would saved his happen. family. I'm saying it could have happened. He could have put the boat over. I'm not saying for sure it could have flipped. Like, this is nonsense. This is all nonsense, everyone. <laughs> Peter, great job making the sacrifice to no. save your kids. Whatever. You can go and you can tell your kids how you and your wife sacrificed so they wouldn't swim. I, I think that, I think Peter even been intentionally is like jumping out of the book, trying to push it back over upright. To save his kids. That's what he would be like. on the high side right now. Putting no, that he's boat pushing down. the boat back over. He's like he's pushing that that top oar and just like <laughs> pushing the boat up as he's falling out. I guess uh, he held is, on to the oar a little too long. So didn't this is out. a good. He did a job holding on his oars. If he just had pins and clips, he'd be there. But we've belabored that point. This is a good point to, spot to point out that where this is where having um, ropes tied tying your oar to your boat helps. Having some oar leashes. Totally. Well, because yeah. then he also he also wouldn't have gone under so long. As the boat came up, he would have holding the oar. He could have grabbed onto the oar boat and probably climbed back in right away instead of having that deep swim. And those Carlisles fill with water too, don't they? 
Uh, I, I don't know how badly they do. I mean, abuse them on, I feel like they float somehow. They but float. Mm-hmm. They okay. Float. Yeah. So if I'm going to like, I, I've had, I don't think I've had any critiques of Peter so far. My one critique is, is right here after this is training the kids to pull their mom back in. That's the one part that bums me out in this is they just hang out there and their mom's holding on the side and no one goes over to help pull her back in. You think I they think. can pull the mom back in? Oh gosh. Yes. Oh yeah. The girl for sure. And the two of them together, definitely. Well, yeah, they or can, at least try. At least yeah, try. they can at least assist. You yeah, know? assist. Maybe she's they open just, too. So she because she's close, and that's the one thing I would say is like in you know we talk about giving a good safety talk even on private trips, and this is the spot here is how to pull people back in because they're they're you know they're watching her and they could just come over and help pull her back in, and then she wouldn't have gotten hit on the rock. So okay. mom sacrifices herself, and the kids don't you know <laughs> help her out. Let's just you know. Okay, I want to I want to um, talk about this really quick because this is an important topic, and I think we're going to disagree. I think we're going to, and I think <laughs> I think we're on a good topic, but I think it's good to have the discussion because that's going to shed light on things. I think we're entering a gray area here. There's not a right or wrong answer, but there's different ways of seeing things. And yeah, cool. I'm going to make the claim that the kids, if they try to pull her in, they might not get her in, and then she's just exposed on the boat to get smashed on Gunsight Rock. So so my claim is she's going out and it's su- it takes such a quick reaction to pull her in. She, I'm gonna, let me finish Aaron, I know you're going. I'm gonna claim that when she falls out, if it's, if it's chaotic white water, she should get on her back and put her feet up and ride it out. I, I think there's, some, don't, there's something Don't grab the boat, me. don't grab the boat because of Gunsight, you, my, my fear here, the most, one of the most dangerous things can happen here is her getting slammed between the boat and Gunsight Rock. That is my fear right now, right? So the kids holding onto her and can't get her all the way in, maybe, you know, that could be dangerous. Or just her holding on like she did, if the boat was just three feet further, she would have gotten slammed and it would have hurt. It would have been it would have been bad. Go ahead and tear me apart. No, I, Zach, I think you have a point there. And I think that's when I do a safety talk, one of the things I say is when you fall a boat and you come up, you want to know two things at once. You know, you want to know what's coming downstream <clears throat> and you want to know where your boat is. And usually they're in opposite directions because usually you come up downstream the raft like they did. And so you want to come and you want to know both at once because you have to be careful about grabbing on that boat. And if you, and if you are on the boat, you got to be looking downstream to make sure you're not going to get smashed into a rock. I think that I agree with you totally there. Now so the, the kids so pulling I, her I, in could have been problematic here. It could have been problematic, but once she's holding on halfway up, I think like if we go to the next clip, I think there was time, you know, and then like, like I agree with you in some ways, she probably better swimming it, you know, and just getting away from the boat, but she's holding on right there. And I think she's, she's got a hand on it. I and like, like that rock couple, is coming up quick. It, it, it is, but there's still like, there's time to pull her up. The other, yeah. other thing here, I, and we brought this up last week. I think this is very timely. So, Peter, thanks for sharing this because it's very timely with our discussion last week. When you're holding on to the boat, you can't have your feet up. So her feet are yeah. her feet are dangling, right? So my other fear right now is some sort of entrapment. Some no, sort of okay, she's but she's facing upstream, so there's no foot entrapment issue. Foot entrapment issues when your toes are facing downstream, so your toe uh, gets stuck. People have not been people have not been foot and trapped looking upstream. It does, how do you know? Have you gone through all the data? Are you 100 percent sure of that? It's never okay. happened. It I'm gonna happen. tell you, f- foot entrapments are to me like foot entrapment or wood are the two things I I fear the most. Totally. And so, and so you know downstream, foot downstream is the problem. I want feet up out of the water. That's a priority to me. I agree. And I don't think I also she, think that I don't think that, she can make the decision like, oh well, since I'm facing upstream, it's okay. I, you know what I mean? I think like you, 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 you just always do it. Like right now, I guarantee her feet are straight. So down. you're saying you yeah. should right never now, hold onto the raft in a rapid because you could get foot trapped. Is that what you're I'm saying? I'm saying it's a gray area. And you should you never try to pull yourself back into a raft. You know, I try to never use the word. You're going to be downstream. You know, and I then- try to never use the word never. <laughs> <laughs> I, my, my point is, I think on the South Fork of the American in particular, I would rather have people just like in any rapid. If they're the PFDs tight, swim the line, swim it. Don't get caught between a raft and a rock. Don't take a chance to foot entrapment. There's no rapid there that scares me to swim, but there are rapids that scare me to have your feet down. And there's places I'm worried about getting crushed. Now, if we're talking okay, about, 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 about
That's fine. What, I don't care. What about Highway Rapid? On the South Fork? Yeah. They're just going to go down those rocks and just get beat up. Or what about rock? It's like kind of like rock art on, on, on the Swami. Just swim to a rock. Oh, wow. Most people don't or can't swim and get out of the river there. They just go down and they hit their butt on rocks going all the way down. I, I'm, a, I'm generally okay. This is my philosophy, and I'd love to get feedback from everybody. I'm a generally a philosophy. I would rather people swim the rapid with their PFD on and their feet up than take a chance of getting foot entrapped or getting smashed between a rock and a raft. Now, if it's a big, like if it's the middle fork at, at, at like 1.9 feet, yeah, I, I, I'm worried. If it's a middle fork of four feet, yeah, swim to the raft, of course. I want you to swim to the raft. So it's the, it's river and flow dependent. Okay, the other thing that you're missing out on here, I think, is, is that if you're on the downstream tube, your legs are in deeper water, they're going to get pulled down away from you and it's going to be easy to pull you up. I think on the upstream side, it's much more dangerous because the boat's going slower and your body does get wrapped underneath it and you are much more likely to catch your, catch your feet on the bottom and it's a much more dangerous it's much more dangerous pulling people in in one way on the upstream side because of that the downstream side you got the concern about running into a rock so you got i guess you got both you got something but, on both sides aaron these, these are such like fine points when i when things are happening i don't have time to think about upstream to downstream to where their feet are pointing we need to have basic principles no, I that agree. are simple that everybody can just generally follow zach i agree the basic principles yes i'm just saying though is like when you're saying, well, this is the cause and this is why we're doing this. It's like, well, mm, like I've seen a lot of people who get really beat up on Rocky swims and beat up and on Rocky so, swims is better than worse than that. Yeah. But it's not, I mean, like, like you pull people in quickly after hanging onto the boat for a long time. I agree with you, but I think I think like so. You're saying if you fall in, do not swim back to the raft. The I'm, not Zach safety I'm not saying Zach that. I'm not saying that. Zach safety caucus. I'm not saying well, that. You want it, Zach, you're I'm saying, not saying that. This is gray area. No, but Zach, gray you area. just said you've got to keep it simple so people can understand. They can't be like in this situation you do this, in this situation you do this. If that's true, then you want a safety talk that's very clear, and then you should be like, swim away from the raft. You fall out, swim away from the raft. If it's a low water strip, I mean, right? Okay. Isn't that what you're basically saying? All right, let me let me let me let me let me finish. I, I'm going to generally teach swim to the raft. And I'm going to generally teach, hold on. That's okay. my that's my safety talk. I'm just going to say that's not an always. And there are some times in some rivers where I'm going to say, don't swim to the raft and don't just hold on to it blindly. Like So like if I have to teach one simple thing, it's going to be swim to the raft and hold on. But if I have the ability to instill more things, it's going to be like, hey, maybe don't just hold on to the raft if you fall out. And and for two reasons. One, you can get smashed until your feet are down. I want, I want to make the point here. I'm with you, Aaron. I want to make the point that her feet are down, and that's yeah, totally, totally. That's no, and, Zach, and Zach, I think I agree with you. Like we discussed before with my safety talk, I say if you fall out, you got to look downstream and see what's coming. Because you, you usually I talk about, yeah, you want to swim back to the raft, but there's certain times where you got to be careful if you're on the downstream side of the raft. Yeah, and, I, we, and so I agree. It, it's, yeah, it's we're, we're, on the, we're on the same page. Yeah, we just, I think we're, we're just yeah. like this is gray area, and we need to, you know, it's good to cash this gray area out. There's got so a lot many of comments. comments. Yeah, 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 um, yeah. We got a way back. <laughs> Let's start with this one that annoys me, Nick. You're banned from the show. Um, Blastoise. Shit. Oh, that's, I, I, now we're not PG-13 anymore. Um, how about the woman up front saying love tube? Um, that's his daughter. Yep. Um, she she could she could have pulled him in. Yep. She could have pulled her in. But a weight distribution. Yeah, weight distribution is important. It's hard on a 14 foot okay, okay, boat. Well, I think, I think yeah, so lower. much of the weights in the front. Yeah. When they hit that thing, it just stopped. And I think yeah. that's that's actually Willie Bumma has a really good point there. Is that like we have this, like, I feel like there's this old school mentality. You need all the weight in the front of your boat mm -hmm. to punch through stuff. And a lot of times what happened there is it just stops it. If they had their weight more centered and back yeah. a little bit more, and it'd be hard with that setup, but that nose wouldn't dig so deep and could maybe pop over the top and they wouldn't have been stopped and turned. It would have yeah. just kept going over. So that's a really, really insightful comment. Yeah. Ast astute is the word I want to use. <laughs> Uh, but I think Peter mentioned he is going to get a stern frame. So in this case, a stern frame is great. He's in the back rowing, and his family's in the front. The weight is distributed, and the oars, if he if he lets go of them, there's room between him and them, so he doesn't hit them with the oars. And then he can have them paddling. To give and paddling. Power. Yeah. Speed. And paddling. Yeah. Jared, why do you give Aaron and Brody examples that I, I just don't – guys, come on. <laughs> just stay in the boat. I mean, like, there's this sacrificing yourself for the boat flipping. Is this is insane? I, I, I'm gonna say this in general. 
most of the time where I've fallen out, I've like, I think the raft's going to flip up. I'd stayed in the boat. We've been upright and I would have been in it the majority of the time. I would say, and stay I, in the boat. I, I've had, I've had numerous swim. I swam a lot. I flipped a few times and I think that's rare, but it can be the case. Yeah. It wasn't here. I'm just going to tell you guys, like I, we guys can disagree with me. Uh, so, yep. I mean, you could, this is a, yeah, I think it's, it, and, and I think, but I also, I think, I think just in general, like they didn't look to help. They didn't slide over there at all. It's like, it wasn't imprinted in their mind to help them out. And so I would want, I would like, if I were Peter, I'd be reassessing my safety talk. Be like, Hey, is there a way I can emphasize that more to have people think about that? Cause maybe he talked about too. And it just, whatever was said clearly like, like, you know, and like, maybe they just froze up, but they, they look pretty calm. Yeah. They look, they yeah. look super chill. Like, they would be like, yeah, yeah. there's like, sweet mom, dad are out. Cool. This whatever. Is a great Christmas yeah. card. This yeah. is a great Christmas this card. A, yeah. Amazing Christmas card. I think this is, I like this. I think it's hard to do with three people in the front, have all of them get down because there's limited area down, but with the stern assist, it's super easy, right? Like the stern assist with the towards in the front. That's brilliant. The other thing, going back to that comment just for a second, Zach, mm -hmm. I think, uh, I think high siding, like there wasn't time to high side on that one. That was, that was so quick. Like we're watching photos, but it was like, boom, boom, like that. Like he looked yeah, like he was in straight, like there's no, yeah. It's hard to know. calling a high side call. Uh, calling a high side into a hole is hard to do. It's just, it's hard to do. The only um, way you're calling one is if you're going into a hole or a big wave sideways and you know before and you're like, oh, I'm not getting straight. Then yeah. maybe you're like, oh, hey, and then you call it to the downstream side. But if you call a high side, they'll get confused because you're Yeah, that's the point. As, as we talked hole. about, using the term high side, nobody's like, what are you even talking about? Yeah. So you kind of have to call an over right, over left in this exact. You yeah. have to teach the over right, over left mm -hmm. to make that work. Peter, I think that having getting her pulled in is probably the right answer. It just the caveats that like, Getting like if she doesn't get pulled in, that could be bad next to that room. I am gonna say, I'm gonna also say, I've had times where I start pulling someone in and I push them away because yeah. they're coming to a rock, and you have literally yep. just like, yep, chucked them and just get away from the boat. This is a messy spot, and they went around the boat and like, okay, like been there too. So, I think my main point here is the the avoiding the always of you always pull them in, always have them hold on, and always pull them in. There's some times when maybe you want to back off that a little bit. Oh, yeah. I'd rather see the kids jump back to maneuver the raft. Yeah, yeah. get on the oars, kids. Yeah, and just yeah. save your go, go, go save. <laughs> yeah, no. I think at that point they're secure up there. I, I think that's an interesting idea. Maybe if they got down to the flat water, but they only have one oar, they have to get the other oar back. You know, tr troublemakers called troublemaker for a reason, right? It's not grandma's kittens, it's troublemaker. This stuff happens. <laughs> I'm going to say this I think troublemaker is the hardest class to wrap it I've ever wrapped it anywhere. Huh. I've actually never rafted it. So <laughs> <laughs> I, I learned on this rapid. So this is like my, this is where I learned of kayak and raft. So it, it's stuck in my head. Uh, oh man, I passed a bunch of comments here. Yeah. Did you, did you, Whoa, there's so many comments. Um, we can't get all these comments. I'll just, I will do an agree one though. Um, yeah, see somebody agrees with me. Um, cool. <laughs> Zach's just looking for ones. Like, oh, there's yeah. a bunch of ones here. We're going, yeah, yeah. Look at this. We're just going for the Zach. All right, we we gotta move on. We got Birdie and have to go do stuff today. So we're gonna um, thank thank you, uh, Peter, so much for sharing this with us. And if we can make the audio work, uh, if I can figure out the technical part, we'll maybe play it again so people can hear your audio. It's it's really insightful, like in your thoughts and and I really feel like um, you know. It means a lot to the community, and I'm going to speak on behalf of the community, that you, you share this with us. It gives us an opportunity to talk and learn, and, and you know, you kind of put yourself out there to be, you know, to be critiqued and exposed, and I think it's, it's, it's very nice that you did that. So thank you so much uh, for, for sharing that with us. Yeah. Uh, so I'm going to get rid of this video and move on to our next one. I'm going to say, um, Noel, definitely way, Trailmaker is way harder than Coffee Pot. I mean, you don't have to do anything in coffee pot, and you're probably yeah, gonna be okay. Don't hit a wall. Now, in an inflatable <laughs> kayak, I, I'd still say I think troublemaker is harder, but coffee pot is way scarier. In a, in a kayak, hmm, that's a that was a tougher question. In a hard shell kayak, I think catching the eddy and trouble man must be easier. What about you, Zach? What do you think? Coffee pot's pretty easy compared to troublemaker. It's that's called troublemaker. <laughs> Not the coffee. Pot. I mean, it's called troublemaker. Coffee pot is just it's coffee pot. 
Like there's some boiling. Everyone, everyone answered coffee pot just as boiling water on the road yeah. in Mule Creek Canyon. So. All right. Well, this is our, our next video, and this is from the wind. Aaron loves it when we do do wind video, but it's not of me, so maybe you'll accept it. <laughs> uh, and um, oh, cool. Have fun, Scott. Thanks for thanks for joining us. And uh, I, I added some B-roll because I'm trying to become artistic. And so we're going to start with a little B-roll footage and then get into a bit of Brody rowing. Look at my B-roll. Isn't that cool? <laughs> I had Dustin move in the background. I'm like, Dustin, just do things to make it look cool. <laughs> See, B-roll, fun, huh? All right, but Willie Bum Bum, what's the hardest commercially rafted class three ever? What's the hardest class three ever? Yeah. Whoa, all right, here we go. Huh? I mean, oh, Troll, cool. Trollmaker is probably class four. They just call it class three plus so that the river is not class four. So, I mean, that, that's, I, I shouldn't have said that. I, you know, but that's, you know, that, that's right. I mean, Aaron. Yeah, I agree. agree. I kind of agree. I, I think so. It's like, you know, like, that's a, yeah, it's, it's a hard class. I mean, yeah. It's, it's a hard class three. It's if yeah, it's the so okay. So we're catting, we're cat boating here, huh? We're cat boating. We're here. cat boating. Jaws is trickier. Oh no! Show off. Caught, caught me hot dogging. Hot dogging. Nice ship on the right. Look at that. He's not on the or the um. Oh, you are now. When you're shipping, you end up on the or thingies. So this is the bottom drop of Ram's Horn. <clears throat> so look how far you are from the donuts. That's so crazy to me. You can do that. <laughs> it's a sweet. You just get set up, get the right momentum, and just sort of fall down. I love this bottom drop of Ram's Horn. I'm going to say thanks, Willie Bum Bum. I'll have to check out Jaws. I have no idea. We're not talking about Jaws on... on uh, Jaws, Jaws the, it's the entrance of Bill Creek Canyon. Is that the yeah. Jaws he's talking about? Because I don't think that's that hard. That's way yeah. easier than Troublemaker. He must be talking I, about a different one. Is there shallow? Is there rebar in Jaws? Or is there another Jaws? There must know. be another Jaws. Yeah. Because that, that's the one I was thinking of. Coffee pot. Can <laughs> really... I mean, Brody, Brody, you've run the rogue like 100 times. What's mm -hmm. the worst thing that's happened in, in Coffee Pot you've seen? Somebody falls out and takes a swim. Yeah. I mean, or you spin around a little bit in the eddy right before exiting the narrow point, but and bump a rock. Yeah, not the or end of the world. You kayak and you flip and you swim. Mm -hmm. Oh, um, super sick, Brody. Oh, thank you, yeah. Willie. Uh, on the trucky. Oh, which one is Jaws on the trucky? Is that the last one? I think it's the yeah, last one. Well, I, I can see. I can see that the the, the trucky the. That trucky section has got some actually tough drops in it. Yeah. And with the rebar in there. Yeah. All right. I'll give that to you. I mean, again, it may that rapid job. I think it's the one right before the takeout that you see from highway interstate 80. That's another one. That's like maybe class four, Yeah, but they call it three plus just to make it class three rafting. <clears throat> They're both hard rapids, but tro yeah. troublemaker is called troublemaker for a reason. It like messes <laughs> with it. It's like it's in the name. You know, like you know, we're not. This isn't fluffy bunnies. This is troublemaker. This here's a uh, uh, Dustin, the professor, rowing these this eleven foot cat, the wing cat. Oh, this is do just you, below Rams. Do Rams you Rams. how high a volume will you run these little cats? Pretty high. Yeah, I'll run this pretty high. I love running this boat. This little boat of high water. Oh really? Yep. It was like a kayak because <laughs> it's so light. You can you can go places you can't. The bigger cats can't. You miss the holes. The bigger cats sometimes have to go through the holes. The thing you can just move over above holes and just kind of pick your way down the river. <laughs> I think it's I think it's uh, better uh, big water if you have a kayaking background because you're mm -hmm. used to being in a small boat and maneuvering around. Brody, have you run Zach's cat? Is that your own personal cat, there, Brody? Yeah, that's mine. Um, How does that compare to the the yellow cat? How are they similar, different? It's just a little bit. I think it's a foot longer, and my tubes are 22 inch in diameter. So I think that the boat, Zach's boat that Dustin is rowing, is 11 foot by 21. Yeah. Does that sound right, Zach? That's about right. Yeah. So uh, the difference in performance, like like the different. Do you notice any difference with the different noses? 
entails? Like, does that make a difference? I actually haven't had a chance yet to row Zach's cat down this. Okay. I've always been in mine. But... So, I mean, Aaron, when you look at the cat, wait, let me go back a second. Like, because what you're talking about is how blunt that nose is on the wing. Yeah. It's interesting. It's just a different design. Yeah. yeah. It's not that different, actually. It just, uh, if you look, let me see if I can. Hold on, let me oh, I don't, I, I, I expect that it doesn't really make a difference at all. It's like cutting the tip off. Yeah. Basically. So instead of this pointy nose, they just basically cut that tip off. And it's kind of nice because it makes the boat a tiny bit shorter. So when you're trying to swing by a rock, that little pointy part isn't like getting caught on the tip of a rock. You know, like yeah. when you're, you know, when you're taking a ducky, totally. a, long, a long pointy ducky, that last foot is pointless. It's just there to mess you up when you're trying to get through a narrow channel. And so I, I like the wing because it does, it's, it's actually an 11 foot boat that, that acts like an 11.6 because they like cut the tips off. I just wonder if when you like hit a big wave or something, if it stops you a little more because it's a little flatter on the front, if it, you know, like it, if it changes a tiny bit. That's my thought too. Yeah. Or, and like, if you go off a steep drop, if it doesn't, if it doesn't come up quite as easy as nice, it, it more will go. <laughs> it's definitely flatter on the top. Yeah. It's so little volume. It's like so little volume though. I don't think it makes a difference. I really, I, I dig this boat. And I have the same it one, looks, the one that's just like it. I run both and they're, they run pretty similar. It looks fun. This is balls to the wall, right? So it's pretty low water. That low water, this is one of the harder rapids to style um, the way Destin and Brody did. <laughs> These guys are going to take a completely different line. So before we go to here, I just want to... Um, Right before, so Bronco is the last rapid on the Truckee. I think I was thinking yeah. of. So it's a rapid above there, and I can't even remember what it's like. I've seen someone come too fast at the top of the Whoa, I've never seen that'd be crazy. Hmm. Uh, so we're gonna switch over a little bit to have some some footage of R twoing here. I know we've wanted to talk about R twoing a little bit. I feel like I feel like more people need to R two. I think it's I think such a, a good runner. And yeah, I mean, I just yeah. stuck in Hawaii too long. I think people are. Yeah, I, th I think <laughs> certain people are, but I think others still aren't. Like you don't see. I don't know. I think it's a really, it's such an easy way to run rivers. I mean, it's yeah. look at that. Like just do 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 do. Not a big deal at all. Um, they're, they're super skilled, so they make it look easy. But yeah, it's it's just fun. We were talking about at lunch that we we had just pulled over for lunch uh, after this, and we we're talking about. Um, R twoing and, and versus kayaking and how with kayaking you have to you can just go you can meet people and go with with R twoing you have to have friends yeah right? and you're, you're dependent on your friends like you have to have a buddy who's like yeah I'll go and then if they bail or they're late you know you're <laughs> dependent on them yeah. to, not only the boat but to carry the boat up and down the hill and you know all the stuff yeah it's true that's nice about the cats they're so much lighter carrying up and down the hill. Yep, yep. And then, you know, Brody and I can just go, and if people want to come, cool. We don't have to, like, find a bunch of people. Like, once we have a solid plan, we just have two cats, and then whoever wants to add on can. Whereas if I was dependent on an R2 partner, and they all of a sudden had a dentist appointment, I'm like, oh, I can't go, guys. <laughs> but I'm going to say the R2, though, you just, if, particularly if you're traveling with it in your car, you just, you know, get to get someplace, pump it up, and you go. Mm -hmm. The cat, it takes so long. You, you guys are running your cats on trailers. It takes so long to rig a cat. You got to do so many cam straps. I mean, this yeah, morning, like, Brody wrote his cat. He, he put his cat boat together this morning. It's annoying. It like, is. It's super annoying. Yeah. And then getting them right, getting, getting the tubes at the right angle, you're like tightening them too much. Like, ah, I got to get it back. So, no. and I'm slightly yeah. OCD with that. Yeah, yeah Brody, totally. Brody does it to perfection. Yeah. So no, this, I like, Yes. So that same rap from the GoPro video, the GoPro footage. It was that so it was just like me on the shore with the camera, and then that was the GoPro. And I added this here because um so let me talk about this in a second. Let's get to some comments really quick so we get caught up. Um there are two it's a 13 foot nine. Yep, it's a little bit it's a it's almost a 14. Paddle cat versus shredder for fun R2. Yeah, paddle cats are cool. Um yeah, they're cool. You guys have any thoughts about paddle cats? I think they're sweet for R2. Yeah. Yeah. Do Zach, so, so, Zach, so what do you, are you going to answer this question? What does that mean? Like two people in one boat? Yeah. He's saying a single boat trip. You do single boat R2 trips on this stretch. Okay. So I'm going to tell you best practices and I'm going to tell you <laughs> what I think. <laughs> so best practices, no, one boat, you don't run single boats, right? 
but if I am with somebody who I know and trust, like Aaron or Brody, and the flow is moderate and we do the run, I might. I might, but knowing that I'm violating best practice, I, I don't, I am totally. More than might, better. Zach, you've done it. You've done it. <laughs> <laughs> might. On the wind, I don't think I have. With me, you did it when we trained for the race. Oh, that's right. That's right. I have. Yes. Yeah. yeah well, we did. Oh, you the knew the answer to this. That's funny. Yeah. That's why I was like, yeah, I was like, oh, yeah, yeah. I was going to say this that. one. We've done it together on the wind. Yeah. Wow. I mean, but, but, it, but so like, I think there's a difference. Like, I'm not going to take like a rando friend who doesn't understand the, the consequence of that. <laughs> I'm going to bring somebody who understands the consequence of what we're doing that I know can swim to shore. I'm not going to do a high water. I'm not going to do a low water. I'm going to, and I'm going to do something where like I, I'm very comfortable and we're both know we're taking risks. And I'm going to add one more thing to that. We also know that we're setting an example for others. So by you and I going into R2 before the race, we didn't go back and brag about it, post on Instagram, I'm just did a solo lap down, whatever, because that sets an example for others. Right. Yeah. We, and so like, even now I'm hesitant to admit it because I don't want to glorify solo boating. It's a thing that I have done occasionally that I understand is risky and I don't want other people to, to be doing. And I hesitate to talk about it because it make it, it normalizes it and it shouldn't be normalized. That's a good point. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, this is the first time I think anybody knew other than the two of us that we did that solo run. We didn't come back and be like, <laughs> brag about it. We're like, we just had fun and we practiced and, you know, we didn't, we didn't, you know, post all over the, over the, Instagram. yeah, I like this comment. <laughs> yeah. I mean, good point. Good point, Courtney. I, I'm still learning how to R1. I got to take an R1 class from somebody before I, I'm ready to commit Courtney. to that. But I know. Courtney, I, I need you to give me an R1 course because I just go in circles. Uh, but hey, Courtney, my, uh, my mini, mini max is coming. So when the mini max shows up, we can go do R1, R1 laps. But two R1 boats. So two R1s are better than one R2. But the thing I want to, I just want to, I don't know here. if I agree with, I don't know if I agree with that. Oh, God, Aaron, what's wrong with you today? <laughs> Why don't you agree with that? Because I think, I think R2 and you're much safer. I think Courtney would disagree with you. Here's the question. Okay, here's my question for you, Ben. So, what's going? Explain to me what's going to happen with the two R ones. Like, like the R two. What's the worst thing that happens? Your boat flips. You flip when you both swim, and so you one gets stuck in a tree, and one gets stuck in a foot entrapment. Okay, so so you both are R one, and you both flip. Same thing can happen. Way more likely that only one of you flips. I disagree. When you're R one, it's way harder. Hey, and you're, you're, when you're, you're R two and you flip. Okay, let me rephrase that. When you're R twoing and you flip, everybody flips. When you have two R1 boating flip and somebody flips, not everybody flips. So yeah, I'm going to flip a lot more often. Hey, Aaron, that's why you take a third R1. -er. They're not flipping more. <laughs> yeah. It's nonsense. You're going to flip way more often R1 in than R2. Um, that's debatable. That's debatable. I'll let Courtney and I'll let Aaron Erdick uh, just Google Aaron and Erdick rafting and you might learn a thing or two. Well, I'm going to say if you're really good at it, Zach, I'm talking about us. Like, I'm not talking about experts. I'm talking about us. So, we're, so you're saying you and I, if we go together, yes, Brody and yes. I, or any you of the two of us, we would be safer in one R2 than two R1s. You and I, yes. But once we got better, the two R1s are better than the one R2. Just get to, yeah, I mean, duh. Yeah. Kayaking's always, <laughs> kayaking's just, get always your, just get your kayak and bro to come along. Yeah. Speak for yourself, Noel. I was very responsible <laughs> in my younger days. Two boats equals two sets of safety gear. Yeah. Take that, Aaron. Bruce Cooley's on my side. Well, <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, this is nonsense. Noel, and please don't share any examples of our youth. So um, we're here in this eddy. And I just want to point out one thing I really like about this is everybody's eddied out waiting for each other. I think when I watch this video, there's a great example of like eddying out. They set safety for the R2. Everybody's just chatting, talking how awesome they are. And the way that they leave the eddy as a team is just, it's effortless, but this is how it's done. So that's why I kept this last bit of the video in here. That's why Inzies show. Outsies are great right there. I'm up against the wall, but I can just pull my oar in to use it. Yeah, because you don't know how to ship. Is that why? <laughs> yeah. This new technology. This new technology. Aaron knows what I mean. 
Well, I'm actually going to agree with Zach on this, Brody. Sorry. Oh, yeah. I mean, I understand. There was what you no mean. reason. I like how you can use. I like there. how you can use the or to push off. But man, I see people way too often with NCs now is pull it in when they should be shipping. It. And I think. Oh yeah, often. yeah. It mid rapid always ship. Never pull it across your body. But in this situation, we're just sitting there. Willie Bum Bum, I have an important question. Can you use slashes and hashtags? I actually don't think you can use a slash character when you're doing a hashtag. I think you can do NZ dash outsies for life, but not NZ slash outsie for life. Underscore? Underscore. Yeah, I don't think the slashes work. I think you're – so I, I might – you want to rethink your uh, – your, your, uh, your hashtag. You Does it slash? really matter? Yeah, because I don't think I don't think <laughs> by the international hashtagging agencies. It's just a, it's just a, it's a technical thing. Yeah, but I, are are you really going to go check that afterwards? He's more making a point. He's making a joke. It's a joke. I'm not. It's well. I'm just saying this joke is is has bad syntax. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, it, like like your joke has, is grammatically incorrect or something. Like yeah, that. your joke is grammatically incorrect. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> Come on, we agree. We are ninety. It's like talking to Dustin. We're talking to Aaron. Sometimes <laughs> we are almost always in agreement. We just have to hash out the gray area, right? Right, Aaron? Or do we worry yeah, about we have it? to find the one percent of the one percent of the one percent that we don't agree on, and we have to hammer that for like two hours. Yeah, even though we agree with almost everything else. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, I think what I like about this is you. We kind of talked over it with the hashtag comment, but uh, like they're back in boat order with good boat spacing. Right, like it happened effortlessly. So this is with really good boaters. I mean, like this, it just naturally happens. And I think this is to me, you know, actually we're about to do one of our class four schools, and we just talked about this a couple hours ago. We're gonna hammer boat spacing and boat order, and to get to this kind of spacing and order is hard. Like it, it takes a lot of practice. And so we are just, you know, this this team of boaters knows each other well is in practice. Is in practice. Now the three boats on the right are choosing a different line than they are too. And so there's going to be a boat order switch because the way that where they are two is going is faster than where the three boats are going. And so um, I, I'm in the lead in that black boat and I, I know this is happening. And so I'm purposefully slowing down so that I don't enter the, I don't enter the three of us don't enter the same time. The R2 does. So can we, can we go back and watch one thing I don't like, didn't like about the R2 or zero approaching rapid is the person on the left kept taking their right hand off to talk and to do stuff and adjust their sunglasses and everything like that. So their palate is just waving around and whatever. Yeah, it's flat water at the top. But there's so often when you're like entering a rapid and there's a little rock you don't see or something you see and you hit it and you get jerked around. I think it just it's best practices are if you need to adjust something, I don't let go see with it. the shaft hand. Right oh, there. Right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's go a bunch of times. So I'm going to say best practices for the person on the left to let go with their left. You know, actually, you know right. why she's doing that, Brody, is she has a, um, or, or Aaron, she has a um, hand, a kayak hand thing around the paddle. She's got a pogey. A pogey on the, the paddle. Hand. Yeah. So I, I think if you're guiding, you're totally right. But I think if you're tuning and you're both, these are both like really accomplished guides, like they can be aware of their, their team. So it is setting a bad example for our viewers. And thanks for pointing it out, Aaron. But the pogey, the pogey to stay warm is what she did. Yeah, I'm not a fan. I feel like usually when I see that, people people just have a habit of taking that hand off. Then I would maybe I wouldn't wear a pogey because that means you're gonna have to let go with your palatine hand if you need to grab onto something. So that sounds like that's a safety issue. I mean, I think when you're private boating, Aaron, and are twoing, I'm not I'm not gonna be as much of a. St I think it's great to point out, but like. I mean, I, I think that person's right across from me. If you care about your friend across from you, you're gonna keep your hand on the paddle tee. Like that in the that's, entrance, in the entrance, every, like, the like, class the one. like right now, she needs to grab onto something because she's falling <laughs> out or do something. Is she gonna let go with her left? How's she gonna let go with her left hand? She can't. That's what I mean with having the it's a pogey, you can pull out of the yeah, yeah, she can't easy, but yeah, not that easy. But she's, she's 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 gonna go with the right. I just I just say, like, hey man, I've seen a lot of R2, I've R2 a lot, had a lot of R2 partners who are good boaters who let go of the penalty. How many times have you been blocking? Because someone's letting go of their pal to at the wrong time. It happens happened too many times. You're like, dude, you got a hole in your pal to. All right, point taken. 
yeah. I want to get back to what I was. No, I agree. I mean, I think paddle tees are the most dangerous things in the river. So it's a great thing to point out. Um, and I just want to point out, like, even though they swapped the lead, we're still back in boat, sp- boat or- we're different boat order, but spacing, we kept spacing solid. And it took conscious effort to do that. And you'll and notice they we all out. And they eddied out, like, between rapids, and we're all going to eddy out. And there's not a lot of room. They made room for me. Now I'm making room for the next person. Like, we're being very conscious. Let's get everybody in the eddy and let's eddy out. And let's now again leave as a team. And, and with us, we didn't. This is something we talked about ahead of time. It's just this is what good boaters do, right? Like we ran the rapid. We're all going to eddy out. We're all going to talk about how rad we are and how how sick our line was. And then we're going to get back into our boat order and leave in a group. Hey, so, Brody, I got a question question for you about what just happened there. Did you see anything different between what Zach did and what Dustin did in terms of coming to the Eddie that Dustin did better? Uh, Reed, can we go back? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're going to catch the Eddie here. Don't let Dustin see this. I mean, my head. Uh, this is a. This is. A, I think this is actually an important conversation. What happens right here? See, I shit my left door. Yeah, this part right, yeah. This part right here. You bumped in. Bumped him. him. Yeah. Bumped oh him. come on! No, I think that's important. I think that's an important thing. I see. I see too many young guys come screaming in and bumping other boats to slow down. And in general, you want to do what Dustin did here. We did a nice job. He came and controlled and didn't run to another boat. Oh, I think that's it. That. No, I, mean, I think that's a really important thing. Like in this situation, I'm not that. I'm making about room Zach. for Dustin right now. Is that, yeah, Zach. I'm not really concerned that much about this situation, but I think it's an important thing to discuss. Is like in terms of Eddie safety, and you're talking about catching Eddies, like controlling your speed and coming in and not ramming into other rafts. It's Dustin like that, turns that's and it, pulls. That shows a lack of control on the guide part in general. Like Zach, for this, wow, I don't, I'm not. Aaron. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but no. I think I think th- I think okay. that. I, it's it's a, I think it's a minor important thing, and it's it's worth pointing out, kind of like the T group thing in the last one. But I think it's more important to get all the boats in this eddy. Oh, totally! And getting four boats, <laughs> three of them with oars, into a small eddy totally. is a massive undertaking, and it, that's it, 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 and that it takes exactly. a lot of a coordinated effort between everybody. And you will, you can't get four boats in this eddy without some people bumping. It's just not it, even it, possible. Yeah, yeah, but then Zach, I think there's a difference between bumping lightly, and you didn't bump that hard. But also just like being purposeful as you come in and trying to avoid doing that. Because a lot of times people who are already in the eddy, like someone will have their hand off the paddle team be doing this or doing that. Yeah, someone's going to hit them and someone falls out. Falls. Yeah. We've seen it. You know, we've seen it happen. I think coming in in control, and this is something in guide schools, we hit hard because I feel like in guide schools, it's a big problem is they just come flying into the eddy out of control and just being controlled. And really like if you bump someone else, like, you should be like, dang it, you know, like, eh, I could do better. Like, I mean, like, it's something that's it, hard to, it's, I mean, we're, I mean, Brody and I are about to teach two, two classes in a row yeah. of this stuff. And it's really hard. We can sit there on a blackboard and explain to do this. It's really hard to get everybody to get together in an eddy in a responsible manner. Yeah. It's just really, well, but, and to like be, be like, you have to be, you have to make room for other people. Yeah. It's really hard to teach. And so like, there's so many things that go into it. It's something you get better as you boat. But it's yeah. so hard to teach. But I think it's something to be aware of. And like AC Fab has a good point, though. Is like where that that's why I bumped into in. him to make room for for homeboy. Well, also, and you can make the argument if they maybe if they pulled in the eddy a different spot, it would make it easier for an helper and else to pull. But I think there's a lot going on in catching eddies on technical rivers in terms of is like creating space for the people. That's another good point that AC Fab says creating space for those people coming in behind you, you know, and like and having a plan and trying to don't be sitting in the middle. And also, yep. if you're coming in, don't come flying in and ram other boats and bump them out of the eddy. How many yep. often have we seen that? I think there's just like it's challenging for sure. And I'm not saying Zach, your thing was like whatever, man. It wasn't a big deal. You just, you, I was you perfect. Them. Yeah, you were perfect. Yes, yes, you did a perfect job. It was you know, those guy, other guys were in the wrong spot with their. Back. <laughs> so Let's yeah, that's a really to be idea. in control in eddies too. Yeah, yeah. totally. Yeah. yeah. So Mike, I. Uh, it was a nice day. Uh, a wetsuit and paddle jacket would have been great, actually. Um, we just have dry suits because that's what we wear. All, you know, we're out here. We just have them. We throw them on. Um, yeah. But, I was cooking that day. Yeah. I would have. I mean, I, 
it might have been irresponsible, but there was a time when I was like, man, shorts and a dry top would have been pretty nice too. I was really like borderline, like, is that safe? Ooh. It would have been a little yeah. cold on the legs. Well, I was in a raft, so I didn't get splashed. Yeah, yeah, cat boat's a little splashier. Um, that black wing is the best boat ever made. It is a sexy <laughs> boat. That's a, come on. It's the dumbest boat ever made. A black boat, a black raft. Oh, it's not practical. It's just badass. <laughs> okay, okay. It's the best boat. Uh -oh. I mean... And I, we ran it in the summer. We ran it in the, we ran it right over already like two middle four trips. Yeah, it was a sweet chaser boat for uh, Toby because Toby's our big sweet our black boat sweet and, boat. Yeah. And we had our little mini fine. chase. It's not boat. that big. It's it's matte black. So so it's this wing fabric that they scuffed up a little bit to make it not reflect for the military. So it's matte black. The logos are in like dark gray, so they're barely visible on there with black valve covers, even. It's a 13 foot with big tubes. It's basically an adventurer, but a 13, a three thwarted adventurer, but a 13 with, so with it's big tubes. Designed for illegal night rafting, basically. <laughs> what? Where'd you get that from? <laughs> Brody's I'm gonna, got it. <laughs> I'm going to make the claim that it's the best butt ever made. I'll leave it at that. A black raft. Yeah. Oh, geez. Don't, don't buy a black raft. Yeah. Unless you want to be cool. Aaron, anyway, we're not gonna we have we have to finish the show. We'll be here forever if we talk about this. <laughs> um Cody, honestly, uh don't be annoying. That's my answer. Just be cool. Like when you boat with people, be nice okay. to them. Like, don't be weird and be safe. And be, show, up, show up on time. Show up on time. Yep. Get ready quickly. Don't make don't keep everyone waiting. Help other people out. Yep. Help out other people is huge. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, be spirit, like people will gravitate to you if if you're fun to boat with. If you're if you are weird or like you don't help, uh, people will gravitate away from you. That's a general rule of thumb. And to find people for the first time, I mean, sometimes you have to go to put in and just kind of hang out certain rivers, and like hopefully people take <clears> you. <throat> or Facebook's great. There's tons of Facebook stuff. Yeah, the Facebook group seems that's incredible. There's a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What is this? I think that boat has a PRV, Courtney. I'm pretty sure it does. What's PRV? Tony Stark? Uh, pressure, yeah, pressure relief valve. Yeah, it's got a PRV. That the black boat's name is Tony Stark. And the yellow boat that they're in is Steve Rogers. So those of you that are nerds know what I'm talking about. Um which by the way, Falcon and the Winter Soldier comes out today. We should be watching so. that right now. Why are we even here? Yeah. Um we actually Brody and I have a, a Marvel YouTube channel that we're gonna review. Marvel shows we got to get to after this, so we got to finish this. And premier spot this, I 100% agree. This is like a huge pet peeve of mine. When on kayaking too, like when there's three kayakers eddying out above a portage, and they don't make room for the whole <laughs> kayaker. I've seen that go bad a few times. I mean, yeah, if you want to be badass, <laughs> if you, yeah, if you want to burn fun. people, if you want to burn, yeah. burn your kids' legs, no. yeah. I mean, what's more important, being badass or burning your kid's legs? That's you have to decide. Um, uh, probably that I, boat. That I think, yeah, I, I like I, I, you know, R two and fourteens actually runs pretty well. Like it's a fun thing to R two as a fourteen. I think it R two is really well. Yeah, yeah, I could see yeah. R two and a fourteen. I mean, this is basically a fourteen. Yeah. I think the thirteen yeah. is the the perfect size for most R two applications. But man. After watching Courtney and Thomas run that mini max down so many big rapids and not and I, I above I even above tunnel on on Gora I was like you're gonna flip there's no way you guys don't flip in this rapid and they styled it after that I was sold I'm like that mini max is how, how big is the mini max it's like six feet long no it's like I think it's like ten That's, five it's ten I'm I like sure. the I think the eleven foot's my favorite R two boat I like yeah. my my best R two experience have been in eleven footers like just like like you said, like you can punch through stuff. It's almost like a little kayak. Well, yeah, that Mini Max know. had a huge advantage having Courtney and Thomas in it as well. But yeah, I mean, not everybody can pull that off. I mean, they're they're they know how to run that boat, and so I, I'm super impressed. How they're oh yeah, cool. We can't wait to see it. Yeah, we're too bad we're here right now. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, Peter, have the same boat as that. Yeah, it's is it the it's the not as a black. I can't remember if it's black or not. But it's at 13. Yeah, he is at 13 foot boat. It's, it's I mean, it's. I think that the, the 13 2 is great because you can still run as a paddle boat. 
I mean, like like the eleven foot. If you have your quiver, the eleven foot. You have your eleven foot R two raft or ten mm-hmm. whatever R two raft, and then you have your your fourteen foot paddle boat, and then you have your sixteen foot gear boat, and you've got your cat boat for cat boating. But if you want to have one raft, I think the thirteen is pretty ideal for a lot of stuff. I agree. It's, I mean yeah. that Tony Stark boat, that thirteen. So I've run that with passengers in it too. You know, yeah. so I'll, I'll row. I row. I'm rowing it today, so it's a paddle boat. But I can we can R two it. I can also row it like on the wind. And I can row with two people in the front. It's great. I've moved the frame back a little bit. And it has enough D-rings. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it has like 14 D-rings. <laughs> <laughs> Dennison here, uh, the guy on the right, actually just ordered a 13-foot Super Puma. Oh, that's a nice boat, too. Yeah. Yeah. And he was talking I, about the Cub, but I, I feel like the Super Puma is a better boat. I think if you're going to R2... I mean, I love the wings and I love that 13 foot boat, but I think the best R2 boat, in my opinion, is the 130D, the 13 foot air or a Super Puma. I think if, if, you're, if your goal is R2, that's where it's at. Do you think the, the Super Pumas do well going side over rocks as well as the, the Sotars and the uh, wing boats? If you're doing like a lot of granny slight slabby things? Yeah, I think they do. I think that the, the urethane isn't as good as everybody says. For, it's not perfect. It's sometimes even a little grabby because it's stiff. Um, but I've had great luck with the airs going over rocks. Um, so I think it does fine. I mean, does the floor being full of water have any effect? Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> That's what I worry about is stopping is just heavier. So you're just like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, the exactly. Track great, it's, but it's a trade off. And... It's a trade off because you also, it's harder to flip, right? That water in the floor creates a suction with the water. So it doesn't, it's harder to separate the floor from the water. And then when you have, there's so much mass there, it really keeps the boat down. So I think that like you, you gain more stability and you lose a little bit of your ability to speed up and slow down. That, I mean, I've thought about this a lot. Um, yeah. I, I think they, they track, I found they track weird when I used them going from the other ones. It was a, it was a big adjustment. I, I mean, they track, they track different. They do oh, exactly. But if you're using so, one, yeah. it, it feels weird. Like if you've been using a lot of like Sotars and like those types of, and you get in one of them. I remember I, on the North Fork American one time was the first time I used one. I would be going to Slaughter Sluice and I was like, whoa, what is going on? Yeah. I just felt out of control. I may got better as the day went on, but they yeah. definitely run a lot different. It's just different. But I, I, yeah. those Air 13s are sweet. Um, <laughs> I mean, Peter, they can make that boat in yellow. Uh, it's just, do you want it to be badass or not? That's the question again. Like, like <laughs> matte black is pretty sweet. I'm pretty sure they say the yellow has got the most UV. The yellow boats hold up the best with UV too. Really? Yeah. Like when we, yep. back when wing demo days were way back when, when Zach and I went to wing demo days, we were nerding out with the engineer. And he said back in the day, he said you can make, they could make clear tubes that they want to, that didn't have any color in them. You could see in them. But the problem is they have no UV protecting in them either because the dye has something to protect the material from UV. Mm-hmm. And he said the, he, back then he said the blue boats, Need the least amount of dye, so the material is actually the strongest, but it has the least UV protection. While the yellow dye, they needed more dye in it, so the material wasn't quite as strong, but it did way better with the UV because mm. they used more of the dye with the with the UV inhibitor. Yeah, I remember that. That's why we have yeah. mostly yellow boats, Brody. It's because for one, they I thought they, it was because photo better. They photograph well, yeah, they photograph well, <laughs> and they la- they less better Th- theoretically that's what a guy told us 20 years ago now that may not be true anymore but, but if you look but it, makes, so it makes sense to me the yellow you're more worried about the sun than the durability then yeah i would well the, i don't think the durability difference is Dur- that much the really d- doesn't matter okay. with yellow but yeah. durability is durability is highly related to sun like these yeah. boats of uh, the way they degrade is based on being in the sun so much and i feel like looking at like like some blue boats i know versus the yellow boats, particularly yeah. the light blue ones, they just seem to fade out way faster. Are those blue yeah. Sotars, Brody, that we had faded? You know, those were crazy how much they faded. Yeah. And there was interesting different years. We had some blue Sotars that faded a ton, and a different year of fabric, or an earlier year of fabric didn't fade. So different fabrics definitely, mm-hmm. even though the same color, they they faded differently. Um, twenty. I don't know what I was talking about. Um, yeah, colors all the better. Yeah, I mean, oh, they, they definitely you know, do, uh, but it's hard. To, like we heard this from one guy twenty years ago. Who knows? Now but I feel like our visual evidence too. Like I, I just compared yeah. the Sierra Mac Sotars to the 
the the food of life food sotars, which John and Chile were just getting hammered, but they were yellow and they the old ones look good in the Sierra Mac blue boats. They they faded out a lot. It makes faster. sense too that darker absorbs more light. I mean, we're getting a science now, I probably shouldn't get into science, but <laughs> darker absorbs more light, so it'd have more UV damage where a lighter color would reflect more light. And I mean, maybe somebody out here knows science and can tell us the answer to this. But it seems like a lighter color would be better. And Mike, Mike asked the question is what, how does gray perform? I feel like it was in between. I remember them saying yellow was the best and blue was the worst and hmm. gray is, was someplace in between, but I don't remember how much. And yeah, I would say from the sun, Peter, that's what I was asking about, but yeah. I think, I mean, I'm pretty sure black is the worst. I can, I will agree. Ooh, even though the, the black, 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 might be the worst, yeah. black is probably the worst. <laughs> I will, I will give black that that's for sure. Well, I thought I'd close up with a little Brody surfing action. Oh, Turns out you can't surf waves and pins and clips, so I had to show footage of Brody surfing. Love this whole little off. stretch here is so good for surf. I'll show off at the end. Um, and then, guys, with, you know, Brody, I have to go here in a few minutes, but I want to share one more video if you guys want to. Don't mind one more thing. And this is just a YouTube video I found. I just thought was kind of interesting, and and then we'll, we'll close this show down. And just as a reminder to everybody who's, who's watching now, uh, we're going to switch the show to two o'clock on Fridays. So starting next week, um, we're going to do this at 2 o'clock, so Aaron has plenty of time to go surfing in the morning. Thank you. Nice. Yep. yep. And so do you see this? Is this up? Yep. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't know if I have any, you know, I, um, let me have some comments about this. But I, I've what been, this is Elkhorn on the Middle Fork. And I have gone down ever since we started the show. I've gone down a rabbit hole of watching videos of people <laughs> having problems on rivers that is getting a, to be a bad habit i don't guys is there a night rafting joke i don't get is this is this elkhorn. like a corn there's an elkhorn rapid on the middle fork yeah. i thought it was on the, the main. main yeah yeah the main oh yeah it's the main yeah got it <laughs> nice brody <laughs> i was gonna say i've been out there for a while i don't remember oh, any elkhorn yeah, I was wondering about that. I was like, me too. I was like, I was like, whoa, on the on middle fork. I was like, damn, I don't remember. There's Elkhorn this. Creek yeah. on the middle fork, but there's, yeah, there's no yeah. way that happened. Um, uh oh. Oh. This does not look good. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. How many? Oh, uh, what's going on here? Yeah. This is special. Um, <laughs> oh, wow. So, I mean, I just want to point out one thing is they're doing a good job of high siding. Um, but Jeez. when you row by this, what, what are you thinking? Like what, what's, what, what, what's going through your mind? What, like, how do you think, how can you help them? And how does this, how do you think this ends? I at first, my first thing I'm thinking is I might hit that raft and I don't need to add to that. That's, that'd be my yeah. first worry right there. Yeah. Would you try to grab the rafts as you go by to save the day? No, no. Okay. Okay. And would you? Have, would you, Zach? No, no. I'm. If I saw this, I would steer as clear as I could. Like I don't want to make the situation worse, and I don't want to become part of it. And I know I'm not going to be a hero, um, <coughs> you know, here either. Like I, this is. We'll deal with this later. Yeah, even Noel agrees. I, you know, it's pretty amazing. If you tried to make this happen, I don't think you could. If at the no, top, you said you said you said, hey, guys, let's try to do this. Let's, let's double wrap. Read, let's double wrap on this. I don't. It's amazing. That that that's. I mean, I wonder what their spacing looked like coming into this. Oh yeah, that's a good point. If they're um, close, or it was like way behind. Super what close on there. Like. <laughs> but how do you think this ends? Just guess how this ends. I think the red boat's going to be upside down. Yeah. Is it going to is it going to take ropes or is it going to do it on its own? No, it'll do it on its own. It's so unstable. It's hard to keep it like that with all right. that gear in there too. Yeah. I think it comes off on its own. The, the cat looks like it's going to come off to the right. Yeah. But, and if this guy hits him, that's really going to. Oh, wow. Thing. That's a bigger rock than I thought behind there. Yeah. Did he just hit him or did they come up on their own? I'm was that sure. just his little, his little, did he kiss him a little bit? It almost looks like he kissed it a little bit, but yeah. I don't think the he red them. boat's sort of pulling the blue boat off. Ooh, dude, that's ugly though. Those people are underwater, under the raft. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. No, I I watched that. That it's kind of it's really nice. We have this footage. I mean, 
Look at that right there. You know, so I think she almost had the dry flip. Yeah. yeah. Go back a little bit more. It's just so cool to have footage like this. It just, you never capture this. Luckily, this person in the cat had a GoPro on their head. So they're just chit chatting. I don't think anything happened. It just sort of like was so unstable. They were yeah. chatting and it came undone. And so that, you know, getting <laughs> pinned, pinned under the raft there it could be really scary. Yeah. Like you can yeah. see he's pinned. And if there's any, it like goes over yeah, a rock. A oh, crushed on the rock. Oh, ow. Yeah, I'd want to be on the cataract there. That, they had a nice line off of that. Oh, yikes. But luckily it's okay. And this is where, you know, when we talk again about having, you know, if you have a non-locking beaner, that's where a non-locking beaner gets caught on something, you know, like that's why we're so, we're so, you know, everybody's so into having only locking beaners. And then how do you, how do you solve this problem? What problem? The boat, upside down boat. Get it to shore. Well, I think you do what they do. You rescue the people first. Yeah. And luckily, it's really flat down below here, so they got time. Where's the other person? I think I see them swimming down to the right. There's some strokes happening. I think they're both right there. Yeah. Guys, I got to tell you, YouTube is full of this kind of stuff. It's so <laughs> cool. Yeah. Yeah. This was last year. Oh. And the boat does kind of go to the shore on its own. Yeah. yeah. But, they, but I mean, yeah, it seems like they handled it well after, you know, they got off there, they got the people, and then they're, yep, corral the boat, get the boat to an eddy, and, you know. Yeah. I don't know. I get a bunch of these. So when, and ideally, you know, everybody sends us more footage for future shows, but I, I'm finding a treasure trove of stuff on YouTube. It's um, super nice. People are uploading it to share and, you know, hopefully it's fun for us to comment down the road. Uh, so let's see, let's finish this up. Um, tube deflation. Oh, they, while they were up there, they could have sent some tube deflation. Aaron's favorite. Oh yeah. Well, I'm glad you're thinking that way. A triple wrap on, geez, that's, triple. that's probably, that's back with bucket boats too. That's, that's a, a those are some good wraps. Back in the day. Bless Thanks, you, Aaron. Mike. What's the I bless sneezed. you, Aaron, for? I sneezed. Oh yeah, that's nice. Where's personal? Yeah, I think I thought. I think I think they were just out of the frame of the GoPro. Since Aaron. Oh, thanks, Dan. Wow. Yep. Should should we next week? Should we um, do one on a topic that would have like actual useful topic to help the students, not just us bantering. <laughs> Yeah, that'd be interesting. We can we can come up with something. I, you um, know, I've been working hard on that that ten minute safety talk. I've been oh, super good, good. I've been I've been practicing in my down here in my garage actually quite a bit on my own because and it's actually I'm so it's the, I'm doing the official IRF talk. I have it down like I have it all written out and I have it organized and I'm practicing it. It's hard to get in ten minutes. How fast do you I, talk? Not super fast, but if I do like my normal one, I'm huh. down to about 12, 13 minutes, but. If I take the jokes out, I can get it down to ten. I was gonna say, how many Marvel co or, uh, comments do you have in there? I have some. I have, I have some new Carol Danvers comments okay. I've been using, uh, but I, I kept it down to one Marvel comment, but it's a new one. Uh, but it's really hard to get to ten, and so I. Are you talking about paddling too in it? Are you no. Using, and you I, still can't get to ten. So, Aaron, we talked about safety talks. In the previous episode, and I've been yeah. really honing in on IRF standards for safe, safety demonstrations, not safety talks. And I've been practicing, and paddle talks are separate than a safety talk, given by the guides. So you're basically saying 11 minutes and 45 seconds is right. That's the best time. I think that's I amazing think, that you're, of course, oh, you guys just the quiz he gave that. I know. Yeah. Like, the correct answer is 11 minutes, 45 seconds. Uh, 43, 43, 43. But, 43 you know, seconds. Aaron, I think I'm still working on it. I'm maybe, But by next week, maybe I'll be ready to give the talk live. Or maybe I'll record it and I can Ooh. use it for the show because the students <laughs> might get to use it. Yeah, I mean. I, I, think, I think going live, I think you going for a <laughs> Have a have a I mean, video topic, but you got to go live. you got I mean, to run live. You can't have a recorded version of it. That's here, here, just like. Here's the thing. Here's the thing, though. Here's what makes it hard is that uh, maybe we can do it out in the property and I can somehow get the live show to work from our property we're using. But 
you know, a part of the safety demonstration isn't just the words. It's like having the boat there to show how to flip and how to paddle, how to use the thwarts to sit in it. It's really hard to do that right here. No, no, I got it for you. Brody can be using your phone. And Brody not, can be filming you. Brody's doing job it. is not to be my cameraman. Brody is <laughs> you a can be your cameraman. Bro, Brody no, Brody's, can cameraman no, it. No. Brody's gonna be off boating the wind or you know, hanging out with okay, the then, bros. Then I mean, set I'm up not gonna be like hey, <laughs> Brody's set up job is not to be my cameraman for the safety talk for our show. Set, set up a per- well, he can join us and talk afterwards and before it because like, we're just gonna film and then we're gonna oh, Aaron, it Aaron's throwing you a camera. Then afterwards, hey, Brody, I some camera for you. Hey, hey, Brody, will you come hold care if you're allowed to talk on the show later? <laughs> no, I, I think Brody would enjoy it. I think he'd be perfect. I think Bro- right. Brody's an artist and he would do a great job of filming. That's it, my it's hard. the thing. I, I would think- take pride in it. Okay, that's exactly. Yeah. I know you do a good job, and uh, thank you. If man. I could be there, I would do it, but unfortunately, I am a big plane flight away. You can do it. So. Why don't you do it? <laughs> oh, I'm not the one who claims to be able to do a 10 minute safety talk. Ada can if hold I the were camera. talking trash about the 10 minute safety talk, I would give this 10 minute safety talk. But I've never said I can do a 10 minute safety talk. I, I never said I can either. I said I should be able to. And you said it's the optimal length. Standard. You said it's the optimal length. I, my point is so let me tell you my point that most safety talks are too long. And you only have about 10 minutes of people's attention. So when your safety talks takes a long time, you're, you're, you're not being effective. You're saying the words, but you're not being effective. And it should be our goal to get under 10 minutes. So if you're doing a 30 minute safety talk, you have work to do, right? And so a good goal for safety talk length is 10 minutes. It's a difficult well, see, goal this to is achieve. My, this is my problem with it though, Zach, is, is that you can't get it to 10 and you've been working very, very hard at this. And I think you need to have a reasonable expectations because people are going to cut out stuff and not say stuff they need to. And we talked about having pauses, time for questions, and it should take about 15 minutes. I mean, 15 might be the right answer, but I can do it in 10 without the jokes. I know I can do it in 10 without the jokes. The jokes okay. are just not how I keep people's attention. I want to see it in 10 like, without the jokes. With, it's easy. With, oh, really? I mean, easy. I mean, yeah, it's, it's not that hard, but it's very boring. It's just like here's here's a paddle, T grip, uh, shaft, blade. Don't like let go of the T grip and then move on. Right? Like I can do the content in 10 minutes, but I think it's actually as I think about it, <sighs> it's short, but it's not in, it's not like fun to watch. I think there's an element of this word's tricky, is an element of like it's if you throw some jokes in there and you yeah. take your time and make it more engaging, it's actually is 12 or 15 minutes. So you, so I think the goal though, if I say you have 15 minutes to do it, then people are going to take, oh, well, give me 20 minutes. So I think making 10 minutes be the goal will help people really dial it in. I've never been a fan of that though, is where you mislead people because then it gets confused because there's people who really are going to be dedicated. I'm, I'm being yeah, very are, clear saying, right now. 10 minutes and people will be like, I can't do it 10 minutes, Zach. And I'm saying it's a goal. There you are. Not, you're saying it's 10 minutes and yours isn't even 10 minutes. That's my problem with it. I haven't done mine Just yet. Just be honest with people. And just say, hey, it should be 10 to 15 minutes. Brody, what do you think? Honestly. <laughs> I don't know. I like the jokes. I oh, think yeah. that, like, yeah, if it's a little longer because you're throwing jokes in it, it's sweet. Because you're talking about all these things that are like, you know, what do we do when all of these things go wrong? So it's sort of a scary subject. So if we can make it a so little with, lighthearted by. Okay. Let me ask you guys this question. With, without jokes, how long should I say if you talk be? Without jokes, yeah, ten minutes a good goal. Well, well, I'm, uh, saying, hey, Aaron, I'm, Aaron, gonna, I'm not asking. I'm you. gonna. I'm, you're asking Brody. Brody no, says asking ten you. minutes. All right, what do you think? Without yeah, jokes, how long should it be? Without jokes, without questions, and no technical stuff. There's the there's the other environmental part, like no per river, no jokes, cut and dry. How long should it be? A basic talk. Yeah, that's like for a class four run. The the IRF standard safety talk. That we were assessed on that you may forget what's in it. Well, I think if you're to do it and, and to do it well, it, <laughs> it's going to be ten to fifteen minutes. It's going to be in that range. And okay, I think, but I think, but I think can, if you do, if, you're, if, you're gonna, if, you're gonna do if you do a ten minute one, it's <clears> not going to be the quality that you would want to show. So the technical contact can be, can be covered in ten minutes, maybe with the proper jokes and intonations and reinforcing things. Yeah. It's fifteen. So yeah. my question, my multiple choice question would be like, how long is your safety talk, including time for jokes, 
and then make it 15 minutes. Well, I would even just say how long is the ideal safety talk? 10 to 15 minutes. Do so you think 10 to 15 minutes is a good answer versus 10? Well, then it implies that, hey, reach for 10, but get it, try to be in that range. I, I like Dan Kramer's comment. Wait, hold on. Let me get this in the comments. There's some good comments. Top, yeah, the shorter the better. Um, yeah, I think, Willie, a lot of people disagree with you, though. A lot of people would be like, oh, no, 30 minutes minimum to cover everything. But I'm with you. 10 minutes. To there it is, right there. Three. <laughs> Aaron, I don't know if you get that joke or not, but that's my or length yes. number. Yes, I get it. Yeah. Five minutes. I mean, five minutes is tough. I think, I honestly, I could fit it in five minutes. I could fizz, it would be very quick. But I can, I can I mean, better it. hold on the paddle, keep your life jacket buckled, listen to your guide. Let's go. I mean, pay very close attention. I could <laughs> cover all the topics in five minutes. Now, again, with here's an issue like when five minutes, five minutes, all the topics, I could do it. It's not that many topics. The IRF talk is not that comprehensive. It's, it's, it's focuses on some key things, but it's not like it, it doesn't cover high siding, right? It, it's, it's pretty quick. And I, it does, if you don't include also, if you don't include um, the safety craft demonstration, which is whether that's part of the 10 minutes, you know, is, is, is up for debate, but like in the intro, you have to introduce the guides. Well, if you skip that, you know, I can be like, there's the guide, say hi, cool, moving on. Right. Instead of like, you know, there's Steve Rogers, there's Tony Stark, there's Carol Danvers, there's Natasha Romanoff. You know, that takes time. Right. So the, in the introduction, Right, you can make the introduction take three seconds. Hi, I'm Zach. Welcome to the South Fork of the Americans, Class Three, and move on. Versus, hey, I'm Zach. <laughs> Welcome to the mighty South Fork of the American River, a Class Three river. Here are your guides, Brody Sullivan. You know, like you can you can condense that into nothing and still cover the topic and pass the IRF assessment. But was didn't Mark have us do ours in ten minutes? Yes, if I remember correctly, I remember that. See. Aaron, you've been smoking too much dope. It was a long time ago now. <laughs> 10 minutes. Yeah, what was that, like two, three years ago now? It was two years, years ago. ago. Yeah, it was over two, two years, years ago. ago, yeah. How can you have an – okay, so this is a good question, Mike. I mean, this – IR. so this is a good question. Um, and I've been debating this because because <laughs> high setting is in my normal safety talk. But in the IRF standards, <laughs> the paddle talk is separate right? The, the forward, back, left turn, right turn and high side. And I, I'm agreeing with that now uh, philosophically because, and so like that one person does a talk for, for 15 people. And then there's three guys to do it for five or six or whatever. And the individual guy doing their individual talk, because, and Aaron, and I talk about this. I don't always use high side. I might use over, right, over left. So if the safety talk person uses, says, okay, now we high side, then I have to use the term high side as a guide where I might prefer over right over left. And I get that it's nice to be consistent among all of the guides, all do teaching the same thing as well. I know that's where you're going, but I think it also helps to have one person capture people's attention at 10 to 15 minutes. And then a different person capture people's attention for five minutes on a different topic. If that makes sense. So if, if, if like you put everything into one talk, it's 20 to 25 minutes of talking and you're going to lose people. Whereas if if a head head boatman head boat woman head boat person trip leader talks about most of it, <laughs> most of it, <laughs> and then time passes and it goes to somebody else, it's more effective. And effectiveness is important. Sorry, that's long winded, but I've been thinking about this a lot. I agree, I'm, Zach. Totally agree. I think that that that's a nice thing about breaking up. You know, I like moving people to different spots. Not even like okay, I'm doing the safety talk, Brody's doing the paddle talk, and have the Brody walk over to you. Instead, it's like, okay, I'm talking to you about safety. Okay, now you guys walk on over to Brody, get up, walk over there around the raft, and Brody's going to talk to you how to paddle, how to sit in the raft, how to do all that stuff. So they get up and move around. Totally, totally agree that it, it and then they're hearing a different voice. It's, it makes a huge difference. You just watch people are way more engaged when you split it up versus the one person. And you get tired, like, Talking for 10, 15 straight minutes, that's a long time. It's a lot so to keep people's attention. Yeah. If, to if talk in a way that's enthusiastic. Dustin, aren't you supposed to be loading boats right now? Yeah, what is he doing? What's going on? He's supposed to be packing up our gear. I hope shuttle's done. Uh, I hope ben can me up a marina or something. Okay, so Mike, um, we should talk because I think it depends what the required info is. 
right? Depends what that required info is. And Mike, so I agreed, think, agreed, agreed. You can't, you're not going to ca- cover all the required information in 10 minutes. You can, you can cover it. I can do it. I can. Yeah, but not, not, not a quality, high quality. I think, I think the that issue. Northwest Rafting Company we'd be proud of where their guides giving to the guests, right? Let me give, let me give you an example here. I think it's important to cover no diving. I think yeah. diving in the river is one of the most dangerous things people can do. I think it's an important thing to cover in a safety talk. It's not. It's not on. Every, it's not an IRF standard to cover no diving. So you can cover. The, you can cover. And I don't think every river no diving is necessarily. Like if you dive in the Grand Canyon, you're probably going to live, right? So maybe in the oh, Grand Canyon. Even, no, even there, no, the problem, same problem. Yeah, same you problem. people shouldn't dive. And and on a multi day trip, I might cover things in my multi day safety talk that don't matter for a single day trip. But there is an International Rafting Federation standard safety talk that is used around the world, and it's really good. And it doesn't cover everything you may cover, but it's the, it, I think it's a good baseline and a good safety talk. And I think once you go past a certain amount of time, you lose your audience. And so keeping it short is maybe more important than, than covering some of the nuances like no diving. Yeah, I, I think there's a way, I think kind of what Mike's talking about, though, if you break up in the sessions, like when you're handing out people's life jackets before the safety talk, at that point, you make the announcement, hey, you guys, we need these buckled and tight when you're on the raft and not have that part of your safety talk and just have that done. And just like, and just so the le- keep the safety talk about the safety stuff and the stuff that you're not going to talk about other places. Because also like keeping a life jacket buckled, you've got a guy on the raft with you all the time. The guy can see if you're going to undo your life jacket and they're like, hey man, can you not yeah, do that the, right now? I mean, the only thing- so That's like the, that's one of those things like, like really we're covering that and we're that, not coming diving yeah, headfirst works, into the river. Yeah, I mean, that works with- the buck life, the, I think the buckling your life jacket and keeping it on is an important part of the safety talk myself. Because you, because this is when you're working with a bunch of professionals, like if it's three of us guiding a trip, we're going to cover that. But I think if you're working in like um, some, some country that's not the US, there's typically one strong guide and a bunch of weak guides. And so the strong guide has to cover <clears throat> the critical stuff because he can't depend, he or she can't depend on that stuff being covered well by those guys. So I think the IRF talk is a lot about like, Hey, let's cover this critical stuff. That's big. Right. And that big part of the talk too, that, that I agree with is this, the safety demonstration doesn't end when it ends. It continues down the river. So ideally those things are reinforced on the river, but again, in case they aren't the critical stuff, like wear your life jacket, watch your T grip. Here's how to stay in the boat. Here's how to swim back to a boat. Here's what happens when it flips has to be covered at the beginning. Don't you think diving should be on that list though? Before, like, how many people on trips have you seen dive into the river versus like run a rapid and take their life jacket off in the middle of a rapid? I, in our talk, diving is a part of our talk and it's yeah. going to make it last 10 minutes, 22 seconds. Right. Um, but, and I think that's like, I've, man, I've cringed. I feel like I've just missed a few times where you're just like, oh gosh. Ugh. Like, and I've never felt cringing yeah. about life jacket wearing. Like I've never had that problem. Like keeping it tight. Sometimes they're not tight enough, but in general, not the same. Yeah. Seems to have folks' attention. There's an, they're in an environment now. I'm not sure what he's saying. He's saying doing it in the raft. I think. I think reinforcing the raft. I think. Yeah. I think. Re, I think that's where you reinforce it. I think you do the safety demonstration, and then the guide is like, "Hey, you know, in this rapid, don't forget if you swim, keep your feet up." Hey, in this rapid, um, if you fall out and you just swim back to the boat, you know, like I think that's where it needs to be continued down the river. Yeah. Mike, that's a great point. Yeah. And so, yeah. so that's, you're right. You're hundred percent right. And so this is not a one size fits all thing, right? At all. But I think um, the majority of whitewater rafting around the world is this type of trip, this short commercial trip with lots of people. And so the IRF is definitely, the Savvy Talk is designed around that for sure. Absolutely. But I think it works in other situations too. And there's a part in the talk where, in my, in how I'm doing it, where there's a section where you get onto environment, what I'm going to call environmental, but it has, should have a better word. It's like this particular river has this thing, this particular river has that thing. And that's what you take, you take more than 10 minutes to cover that, like rattlesnakes, poison oak, um, I don't, trees. if it's shallow diving tree, yeah, strainers, because strainers aren't part of the talk either. If strainers are relevant, but if you're on an artificial course, you don't need to mention strainers or rattlesnakes. 
So it is kind of like, let's take, let's get to the critical things. You might, you're hundred percent right. Let's get to the critical stuff. That's the IRF talk. Right. But I think what my general take is why I agree with this 10 minute thing is it's a goal. I see Dustin out there right now. He's working. How is he watching this on his phone? Hey, Dustin, wave if you can hear this. Yeah, he can't. Um, so, so I think that we need to try to, I think that the bigger issue is that a lot, he's waving. It's funny. The bigger issue is that some people, <laughs> <laughs> some people, some talks are way too long. Right. And so we're trying to, my goal is to get people to simplify their talks and practice their talks so that they're, 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 they have a nice order to them and so that they flow well and that they cover information uh, in a well laid out manner. And I think putting a time constraint on it helps people refine their talks. Comments? I think you said it real well, Zach. I think it, like having, but I think having an order that makes sense too, where you're not jumping around. Like, like I don't know about you guys for your order. Like I start with like, okay, you're in the raft. So we do to stay in the raft. You fall out of the raft. This is what happens. You fall out of the raft. You end up under the boat. This is what happens. You fall out and you're farther away from the raft. This is what happens. And just move farther and farther away. And, and so that, or, you know, and talking before, like when you're near the raft, talk about the boat flips, all that stuff. So that you have this progression in your mind of what makes sense. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so people can follow it and then you can do it consistently well. And like, I don't think it's bad to have a checklist to look over to make sure you cover everything if you're new on it because people ask questions and you'll get distracted in particular when you're newer to it. But if you're like, I've seen that people do the ones where they're reading something and, and yeah, you might legally be covering the, the topics, but you're not really preparing them well when you're doing that, when you're just reading something off, you know, versus like talking through it, making eye contact, answering questions, really modeling it and demonstrating it. Like a good safety talk, it, like it's an art. It takes time and a lot of practice. Yeah. Yep. I, yep. All of that. So, you know, we kind of just did an episode on safety. We, we can do, we can talk more. And, and <laughs> I got to tell you, I, I have my safety talk and Mike, I'm with you hundred percent on this. My safety talk I give is probably 20 minutes long uh, that I give on our commercial trips. I mean, just, I mean, Hey, just be honest, but I also, I talk about rattlesnakes. Um, I have Avengers jokes. Like I have to do, um, I can get it down to 10 if I need to, if I had to rush a trip or I can make it 40 if I wanted to, but it's, I'd say it's 20 minutes, but I think the, my IRF talk, I'm, I think is an important one for me to model for IRF students. You know, if people want to get certified as IRF, they need to do an IRF talk. They're not, they don't need to do Zach Collier's middle fork of the salmon talk. They need to do an IRF talk. And I think if we're working in Uganda on a half day trip, it's a great talk. And it should be the basis of our talks. And the flow of that talk is the basis of my longer talk I do anyway. So I just take some of the stuff mm -hmm. out of my lower talk. Yeah. It's also why I'm hesitant to do it live because it puts a lot of pressure on. And my IRF talk is not as practiced as my real talk. My real talk is like, that my IRF talk, I'm practicing it a lot right now for the IRF course we're doing in two weeks so that I'm I have it dialed. You want to get that, Brody? No, <laughs> okay, we gotta finish this up, we gotta go do stuff. Uh, Mike, yeah, thank you, Mike and Peter. Um, yeah, yep, this has been fun. And thanks for I don't sharing think you, the video. I don't think you made a lot of mistakes, Peter. Honest with you, I don't think you made a lot of mistakes. Um, whoever sold you those ores, that was their fault. Yeah. No, yeah. Uh, it's get some Sawyers. Mm. That was more of a joke. That was a bad joke. I've been telling <laughs> bad jokes lately. <clears throat> Except for that um, one really good one yesterday. That one good one yesterday. Yep. Yeah, that was really good, yeah. but we won't go into it. Aaron, you want to shut this thing down? Yeah, let's do it. Hey, guys. Thanks again for tuning in. So, just as Zach said before, next week we're going to be 2 p.m. Pacific time. Uh, hey, Peter, thank you for sharing your footage. I mean, that's, that's tough sharing stuff, particularly where you swim yourself and your wife like that. So we appreciate it. And hopefully everyone got something good out of it and definitely agree with Zach that, uh, yeah, I, I don't think you really did anything wrong there. And I think you, you were trying to do your best and you, you look well prepared. Like everyone was well, well, well dressed and ready to run the river. Uh, Brody, thank you for joining us. Thanks great, for having great me. seeing you. It's been a while. Yeah, we'll get on the water nice. together sometime soon. Um, Eric, yeah. And you guys, hey, thanks for all those. Uh, thanks for all those comments. Really appreciate all those comments. Yeah, and, that's a good yeah. one. Somebody, that's somebody right there. That's very astute. Yeah. Pins and clips <laughs> forever. Yes. <laughs>
Uh, All right. Uh, and then if you guys haven't done so, please hit that like button. Also subscribe. And of course, you know, what is it called? What is it called? Ring the bell. So ring the bell. Get, ring, ring the, the bell. bell. So you get notifications <laughs> anytime Zach puts anything online. All this stuff helps get the word out about our show. Appreciate passing along. Let people know. Um, yeah. You guys have a great time on the water today. You guys going out on the water now? I'm yep. doing shuttle. They're going boating. Oh, nice. <laughs>